gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to tonight's edition of the Cloister of the Dice. And tonight, we begin again. My name is John. I'm, uh, the, I guess you could call me the host. <laughs> the MC for tonight's for today's ceremonies. Of course, we've got the crew with us. Of course, our DM, Milge of the Monk. And we've got a couple new players with us with Einbrecht and, of course, the, the, the bane of the Monk's fucking existence, Xanatrix Zara. Hi. <laughs> yeah. There's no escaping this man in the temple. <laughs> Although, the reason... I will no I will note... Even though Zan has been, has been instrumental on the tech support end for the streams, him joining as a player was not the original plan. Because usually Saturdays are his day off kind of kind of day from any du any major duties. But because of because of um a series of very stupid circumstances. <laughs> Oh, he ended. He ended up volunteering. If he didn't volunteer, I wouldn't. I wouldn't have um, brought it up with him. Very stupid circumstances that I helped filter. Yeah, yeah well, you, let's since, not get into that, gents. Well, I think we can. I think we can dip into it a little bit. Just not. Just not going into the full details regarding that person. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um. Basically, the the person that was supposed to come on along with Ayn, uh, had a poor idea of what was actually happening and also did not have a personality that would mesh well with ours. And then they tried to turn that into an issue between everybody, and that didn't work out too well for them. That's about it. Yeah, that, that's, that, that's oh, as far as we'll go with again, it. One. No, yeah. A lot of it ended up coming and going by the time I caught wind of it, and all that I had to say was, um, I should have been contacted earlier if there was if there really was that kind of problem. Yeah. Yeah. We made it clear, we made but, it clear to them we that, that we tried to make it clear to them from the out, from the off, that hey, this is not. Do not expect this to be critical role. Do not expect this to be de Dungeons and Dragons. This is a whole new world you're entering. You're probably gonna have questions. Feel free to ask, and they didn't. No, just made just made a fuss about how, about how we supposedly misled the misled when it was bringing up things that I never said. Not only that, when I was uh, talking with them about character art, I made mention several different times. This is not D and D. Mm -hmm. because... I look at this as a. Oh, go ahead. Because uh, for those of you who are curious about how I set up all the character art, I talk with each player as if I'm taking a commission. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to nail down details on how they wanted their character to look, and they kept shifting back, oh, D&D, &D. oh, D&D, &D. no, 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 not D&D. This is Ember Win. This is something different. Read what has been given to you. Mm -hmm. As there's a reason why I make that pr I make a primer um, every t every time I set one of these up. Because even if we even if we were using D and D, you shouldn't assume that every campaign is going to be done the same way, even in that space. Mm -hmm. Like ima imagine if um, somebody who only knew Forgotten Realms suddenly jumped into Ravenloft and is like, "What? What? Wait, what's all? What's all this? What's all this horror stuff doing here?" I mean, even someone who's played Forgotten Realms just drop them into Dragonlance and still vastly different. Mm-hmm. And that's not even getting into the fact that you can have different styles of ga of game. Um, even even within that, there, like the whole water, the whole water deep heist in Forgotten Re in Forgotten Realms, or some of the stuff along the Sword Coast, or the stuff the stuff with the Underdark, and that's just one setting. And it's for that reason that I always write that primer so people have an idea of what sort of themes, what sort of expectations I have from as a G as a GM. But, oh. In, but after that whole thing went down, 
Zan volunteered to step in as the as the seventh man. We have a magnificent we have a magnificent seven here. Hopefully, it lasts longer than that stable did in WCW. <laughs> <laughs> See, you all thought it was going to make a seven samurai joke. No, that's if that's if we tackle L five R again. <laughs> I would but, love to do that, by the way. Yeah, but this is a what I called a session zero two. So make your common writer or darling in the Franks jokes as appropriate. <laughs> or both. Common in the Franks or darling writer. No. All right. No, 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 I've no, got to no, figure no. out. Do you guys keep talking amongst yourselves. I'm uh, muttering to myself because I've just realized with the way I've got the screen set up, I've got to figure out how to put the character art on here. Mm -hmm. Roger. Yep. So with, so with that in mind, the reason why I'm calling this a session zero two is because the adventure we're going to be doing going forward, known as the Songweave Tapestry, is one that takes place at the same time, but takes place in a different area on Axia. So it wouldn't make sense to have the exact same set of characters in two different places at once. None of us is Time Lords, nor do we want to be. No. Uh, no. Just a quick forewarn, everybody. I am going to a blank screen for a second, so that way I can hide what I'm getting ready to do. I think. You could just use the preview thing and it won't come on the screen until you activate it. Wait, how do I do that? Uh, it should be preview. Uh, at this point, the Ian Curse encompasses is everything. Ah, okay. Thankfully, I know how to use OBS, so I can actually teach her. Mm -hmm. Hell yeah. I mean, I've only had several freaking years of experience using OBS. Yeah, and the ups and downs that that entails. <laughs> I have learned many of its problems, and I've also learned many of its secrets. Mm -hmm. Now, that <clears throat> that being said, the, because of that, it's an, it's an opportunity to do a few things differently. One, as, is, as has been very clear, everybody's doing new characters. It wouldn't, it wouldn't be fair to bring in the old characters when we've got new people involved. Two, in, instead of the aspect system for character creation, we are using the attribute system. This is a slightly different change to the, to, um, the core developments and is a bit more hands-on than the aspects where it was you pick three aspects and everything else is automatic as you go up the tiers. The other thing that's be the other thing that is changing is we are introducing subclasses. This is a relatively new thing with Emberwind of having a optional set of class actions built that are more specialized than the general ones for the classes. But we're doing things a bit different. Instead of the pick six, it is going to be um, six and three. Six, no, six from your class, three from your subclass, or three additional ones if you don't have a subclass. Not all of the nine classes have subclasses. In fact, only f at the time we're doing this, only five, of, not five, um, six classes have, so have one subclass. And we'll, we'll be getting to them as we, as ah, we go through this. Ah, shut the front door. I did not mean to do that. Sorry. No worries. These things happen. No, no, no. I didn't mean to interrupt. I'm just... I accidentally closed out my internet window with, uh... With the, uh... Game in. Yep. I, I gotcha. Don't worry. We all's human. So... Well, most of us is. Looks over in the... Looks over at Zan off to the side. Uh, more like Neff. <laughs> yeah, I'm the alien here. What the hell are you talking about, boy? <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, which makes me makes me wonder if you consider the destroy all humans game anti alien propaganda. 
<laughs> I consider it a fun romp of uh, what I do in a daily business. <laughs> Destroy All Humans is an anti-alien propaganda monk. You, if you're playing it, it's pro-alien propaganda because you're, pr you're playing a badass. You are playing a badass, and I fucking love those games. Okay, I guess, I guess XCOM would be anti-alien propaganda. Then. Absolutely. Very much. Although, if you consider how badly uh, the roles system tends to be in that those games, maybe not. Um, no, let me make it worse. Long War. <laughs> Have you ever dealt with the horrors of the long of the Long War mod? Yes. I no. know you have, Zan. Have you, Neff? Nope, I have not. That will break you. Already there. <laughs> like, it's it's a case where somebody looked at the looked at XCOM and said, "Hey, we need to make this even more bullshit." That's possible with XCOM. Yes. Much as it's. <laughs> Much as it's possible to take do to take say Doom to an ultra violence and make it worse. Hi Plutonia, how you doing? <laughs> or takes or takes something that is not not bullshit, but cer but certainly can lean into it and and make it worse. Hi Extreme Rise of the Triad. We don't. Uh... We don't, we, we, don't, we don't get into that. And in all fa in all fairness, I think Joe Siegler had said that he that a lot of the levels were designed just to fuck with people. Yeah, I've actually only played the original Rise of the Triad, so yeah. Extreme Rot is of is available, and well, if you <laughs> if you if you want if you want to go down that that road with all the bullshit that that entails it's cer it's certainly an option for funeral mm -hmm. uh, or if you or your or your wake if you're irish actually no i take that back there isn't enough there isn't all that much celebrating but now I will I will note with with Songweave there there are going to be a few a few ma a few major differences. Um, it is it is more it is more of a escort more of an escort journey. And one particular thing that came up a little bit during the during the during um, Skies of Axia that is going to come up more in the Songweave tapestry are the Rift Keepers. They they will be playing a significantly larger role, as a, as opposed to just being um, hired help. But with that said, I I think I I'm not ready I yet. Think, okay, I'm I will I'm, let you know when I am ready, though. I promise. Yeah. Now we have to I, filibuster, monk. <laughs> I'm sorry. This is going to take me a minute. Well, so, because it, I with the way I've got everything set up, I forgot that uh, I can't just switch screens that easily. Mm -hmm. Um, I will, I will note one thing that showed up on the server that made me smile a little bit is Hunter posting that he got that he got a physical copy of all of their strengths. I saw that. I was very happy for Hunter. Yeah. For um, do you would you mind give, I know we tackled it in Valley but you would would you mind giving the skinny on what all of their strengths is? All of their strengths is a tabletop game that if you want some inspirations from movies, uh, think Underworld, think uh Blade, think uh those particular action-based um supernatural creature movies where you have some crossovers. Uh it's essentially a game where you're playing some sort of creature of the night. And of course, the, the title is uh, derived from all of their strengths and none of their weaknesses. Mm -hmm. um, 
you've got your vampires, you've got your werewolves. You've also got other creatures that you may not necessarily associate with that particular genre. Uh, but, for example, uh, actually, let me open all of their strengths for a second. Uh, some of the kindred are things such as uh, witches, angels and demons, zombies, ghosts, literally the Grim Reaper. I mean, they're called Reapers, but let's be let's be uh, fair here. They're, they're they're basically just the Grim Reaper. Mm -hmm. um, even deep folk and fairies. So the kindred are are meant to act within these. Uh, darker areas of life and sometimes against their more natural inclinations to try and be the anti-heroes the world needs. <laughs> uh, it's a very interesting set of games or set of, well, set of, in, of rules, I should say. Um, and it would be pretty fun to try out. Mm-hmm. We covered it in a one shot for Valley of the Judge because it's not that dense um, in terms of page count. It's 67 total pages according to the PDF. Mm -hmm. and, and it has the same guy making announcements for like six of them and then not anymore. Rasp. Yeah. The the of. Uh... The other, th the other thing to note with it, and this was something, this is something I pointed out, was it's not using dice the way they're used traditionally. In terms of the you roll to see if you succeed or fail, it is doing it in a um, taking risk approach. Yep. Because if you can succeed, you just succeed. If you want, if you want to do something more, that's a risk and you're rolling dice, and those dice can work against you. Almost there. Yeah. Um, and mostly you used the dice when you needed to make some kicks. And once you've used dice to make kicks, those dice become threat dice for the uh, the GM of the game, known as the Shadow. Mm -hmm. uh, who could then use that to impose doom on you. Or at least just some threat. Doom is if you get some matching threat dice. Does he know what evil lurks in the hearts of men? I would assume he does. Considering he's the GM. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I get the, I get the joke. It was, yeah, it's just... Uh, uh, I love those radio pulps, man. I used to listen to them a lot. But... Uh, I mean, if you if you want an example of the shadow, uh, the the opening by Rasp again says a shadow grips the world and not just the normal shadow that is basically all night is no like a serious supernatural shadow, a malevolent and malicious force, a harsh counterpart to fate or an ugly flip side to the coin of destiny. Look, the metaphor ain't great, but the threat is real. Rasp, alley veteran. Very nice. Of course. When we did the when we did the review, I, I gave Rasp a uh, gravelly, um, slightly bikerish voice because my penchant for uh, for different voices is always present in our reviews. Also, you were probably thinking of Wh of Whistler when you were reading through it. I mean, of a goofy parody Whistler, yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay. Oh. All right, I'm set. All right. Alrighty. So, Ein, you're gonna you're gonna be going for you're oh, gonna be going first. I'm sorry. First. Just uh, one last okay. thing. Oh. One I just gotta I, I just gotta put a black screen on the I, I just gotta put a black splash screen so that way the characters pop. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Let's see. And just make sure, just make sure to upload the thing into the cloister chat so I that I can shall... see it. Ah, shit. Mm. Two seconds. Two seconds. <laughs> I knew that was coming. Worst part <laughs> is, is so should have I. Yes. Yes, probably it is Mildred. 
<laughs> Man. It's not just Mildred. You also have Zan, who's also just like him. Uh, we have many similarities, but we're not exactly the same. I'm not uh, melanated enough for that. I I'm going to say this just because there's at least one person in this chat who understands why I am saying this. Which Zan? Oh, God <laughs> damn it! <laughs> Uh, I don't know the lore on this with multiple Zans. You will. Soon you will. Very soon. Fair enough. Okay. I mean, I could go further and go, well, there's also the Zan from an Unreal Tournament, and do you know how many Zans there are? Do you know how... In, fact, In this chat, you... too. Eh. <laughs> let me... Let me... Let me let me let me expand this. Do you have any idea how little that narrows it down? <laughs> yeah. But you re almost you... there. Almost there. Yeah, don't don't pull my leg like that. I'm sorry. I was trying to do something on the fly. Monk, it's the only part of you she can reach. You can go fuck yourself, sir. <laughs> what are you like, three foot even? You, sir, can go fuck yourself. <laughs> Alright, now I'm ready. We're an equal so... opportunity banner around here, yeah. that's all. <laughs> okay, okay, so I'm gonna turn off the play screen. You guys are gonna. That is not what I needed to do. There it is. So, uh, let me pop this in the chat for the monk. Ayn, you can go ahead and start talking. All right. All right. So, I, Ayn, we're doing you, or handling you first. Um. So and the first Mark, go thing ahead that... and give me the uh, go ahead to uh, reveal. Granted. If my shit will stop being a bitch, there we go. Go for it. All right. So, first thing I'm first thing I'm going to need, uh, Ein is uh, is obviously the name. And while while uh, while I'm typing, I'm going to be asking you random questions about the character, especially when we get to the whole anchors and dead weights uh, part. Okay. So uh, sim uh, simple enough. Starting with his name, his uh, his name is simply Augustus. All right, and judging by the emblem, you're going with, as you mentioned before, you're going with tactician. Yep. Um, since tactician, and let me double check something. Yeah, tactician does not have a subclass at at this time. So there are two, since we're doing the attribute version there are two options uh, option A is is the tr is the dice rolling affair or tr or try your luck um also I see I see that you added added in Neff, you added in a character. I've got I've got the character slot taken care of you. That's not going to be necessary. So I'm just going to I'm just going to delete that. Um, the but w there's two. But like I said, there's two options. Option A is the dice rolling version of character of character creation. Option B is the standard array. How does the standard array function? Um, there are three standard arrays to choose from. Mm -hmm. You can choose five, six, six, and six, three, six, seven, and seven, two, four, seven, and eight. And we'll assign each of those to strength, intelligence, dexterity, and resilience as needed. Mm-hmm. And then afterwards, you get two additional points to add to any attributes as you wish. Yeah. 
if you if you intend on doing the roll the dice, it is roll d4, drop drop one, and repeat that four times. Yep, roll three d4, drop one, add the two. Um, would we be using the variant for balancing out low rolls? Uh, yes. Okay. So, in, if you choose to roll, and you roll 3d4 four times, and the total of the four attributes is less than 23, you'd get an additional point to add to any attribute. And if the total of your at four attributes is less than 20, you'd get three points to distribute. Sure. And, th and then, again, of course, at the end of it, you'd get two additional points as you wish to put between any attributes. So rolling an array are, uh, they're both pretty good. Yeah, I'm going to go with array. I'll, uh, I'll do the three, six, seven, seven. Seems to be the sort of the middle ground. Okay. All right. All right. So let me. Let me put let me put in the base values before before any of that. So you start with 18 HP, um, two in your barrier values, which is your um, soak, two in your defense values, which is your, uh, which is your dodge, your avoidance. Mm -hmm. uh, all your skills start at five, and just the others are aware of this, but just as a reminder. This is a this is going to be in a, a game that operates on a roll low um, approach to the d20. Similar to alternative, low rolls are good. Mm -hmm. yeah. Ah, finally, somebody else who knows that system. I love alternative, man. Unironically, one of my favorite tabletops of all time. I get flack for saying that about all the time. Yeah. It yeah, just it's, so you it's, know, it's a roll under. Take a look at my name. In Discord. Mm -hmm. Nefinor of Frawl. Of Frawl. Yeah, fair. So these are these are the base values within th within this um, system. Um, 18 HP, 2 to Barrier, Toughness and Resistance, 2 to Defense, Dodge and Willpower, 5 to All Skills, 1 to All Special Action Limits, 0 to Critical, 8 to Accuracy, 1 to Penetration, um, your your move action is one to four squares. Your shift action is one zero tide turner charges. And if that all seems low, keep in mind that that's before we apply the attributes. So you said you were going to go with the standard array. So which which of the three spreads are you going to be using? Uh, three six seven seven seems uh, sort of the middle ground, so that's the one I choose. Which apparent apparently on um, apparent it's three seven 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 on the site, so I'm going to be using that. Oh, um, it says three six seven seven in the hero manual, though. That's why I was going on. Sorry about that. No worries. It might it might it might be that the uh, Nomnivore up Nomnivore updates their PD their PDFs in little in little patches fairly frequently, so I will take the L on that front. Mm. Well. Oh. I mean, I mean, this might be actually older than whatever version you have, Monk, so I'd go with whatever you've got. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Neff, I actually uh, wasn't familiar with this particular species, because I sadly, when I was playing, didn't have access to the uh, to the Arcanum. But you have two attribute points that you can add, that you can, that you can add to... So before the... Monk? Monk, you there? Hang up, hang on a sec. Okay. There, se there seems to be a bit of a. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to reload this because some, something ended up happening. Oh, so Augustus, tactician, attribute, standard array. Okay, so from, from, t from lowest to highest, um, wit. What's getting assigned where? So where's the three going? What were the four stats called again? Strength, intelligence, dexterity, and resistance. 
That's Resi sorry, not resistance, resilience. And for a description of each, uh, strength measures your hero's physical power, toughness, and stamina. Intelligence represents your hero's ability to learn, common sense, and reasoning. Dexterity affects how agile, coordinated, and swift your hero is. And resilience describes your hero's charisma, commanding ability, and morale. Mm -hmm. I'd say the three should probably go into intelligence then. All right. So that's go that's going into intelligence, and then we have the sevens in the rest. So where's your two free points going in? Intelligence. Can't have a dumb tactician. While true, uh, I, I figure the uh, resilience would also be pretty important for the tactician since it's commanding ability. Fair. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would assume a seven is still fairly high, though, yes? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, next is going to next is going to be the the um the skill spread and this is large your choice of skills is largely going to work the same way as it did as it did pre as it did previously so you can either you have two options you can either select an occupation or select the skills manually so one major skill and three minor skills Oh dear. How many major and minor skills are there to select from? A well, major skill just means you have you start you start out hot means that starts out at a you get plus six to a major skill and plus four to each minor skill, but there's twelve total skills. Mm -hmm. Yeah, three, oh, three skills per yeah, three skills 12. per attribute. Okay, yeah, if there's only twelve then uh selecting mine uh, manually seems like probably the best course. I was wondering if it is it is this going to be Shadowrun levels of uh, insanity with like a hundred plus skills, or is this just like no, simple? no? In fact, in fact, um, did you? I if let let me um, cause... did you get the hero manual? I mm -hmm. no, uh, do that. Yeah, so it should be should be um pinned i believe in the cloister yep. chat it is pinned and uh if you want to look at occupations it'll be uh page 15 mm -hmm. yep. occupations is page 15 but the skill list is page 13 and 14 yeah there's only 12 skills total three per attribute i'm yep. unable to see the pinned messages because i don't have access to message history for that channel <sighs> all right hold on you look Hold on, I got this. Uh, don't you love? Don't you love this sort of uh, stuff? <laughs> yeah. Hold I, on. I mean, that's uh, that's the way it is. Uh, there yes. you go. There's, there's the, the drive. drive link. Yeah, there's the drive link. Uh, you can you'll see the hero manual right there. Okay. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah, this is it's one of those weird things with this with Discord where it's ridiculously anal regarding permissions on for um uh, channels. Well, and to be honest, that's actually a good thing. You'd rather have more restrictions in place than you intend just to make sure that the people that you don't want here to aren't here than less restrictions in place than you intend. Yeah, it's just that it's easy to over it's easy to oversight because it mm -hmm. because it doesn't um it do, it doesn't it treats e it treats each new per, new person as a blank slate instead instead of what was supposed to happen is it being shared among the roles mm -hmm. cuz i have you i have you all on the sa on the same um ge on the same general role mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I attribute it to Discord just being poorly coded. Discord isn't that poorly coded. It's certainly better than most other instant messaging and voice channel uh, stuff. It's just the fact that it's very specifically coded. 
And it, like I said, it was originally designed that way so that, you know, you had the right restrictions in place for the things you wanted restricted. And in the case of something like this, you want you want the restrictions to be harsher than you intend if there if there is going to be any margin of error, simply that so that people who aren't supposed to be where they were uh, in those places aren't there. Yeah. Oh. Sure, I have the man, uh, hero manual up. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so you should be able to see the skill list. Page uh, okay. thirteen. Uh, by the PDF count, page 12 by the Hero Manual's own page uh, numbers is uh, where the skills start. Mm -hmm. Okay. <sighs> and so it's, and based on what you said, it sounds like you are going with 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 the with the route of ha of each of go going with your skill choices manually instead instead of um, instead of going with the occupation approach. Yeah, and we get to uh, one major for three minor. You said. Yep. All right. I'll make a leadership. That seems like the best one to choose as the major as a tactician. All right, and your three minor. Uh, let's say athletics. All right. Endurance, and I'm not sure between insight or knowledge. It's too bright. Actually, I'll choose Mend for the fourth. All right. And just to jump, just to jump ahead a bit, um, go a, f a, a few pages in. You'll see on it, this will be on page fifteen on the P on the PDF. There we go. You should see a list of maneuvers. Um, pick one. Each each maneuver is essentially a, t a type of secondary action you can take that's u that utilizes a certain skill. The only one that doesn't use a skill is tumble. I'd say uh, vault looks pretty interesting. <laughs> all right, vault it is. So, when you use Vault as a fast action, make one athletics check. If you succeed, your next move action can be used to, tra to traverse terrain vertically. Your move action must end on a square you can occupy. Basically, you can do some nonsense parkour, parkour shit, which is interesting to me. Mm -hmm. Hardcore parkour. So... Parkour parkour. Parkour parkour. Let me... Let me let me fill in the um at the attributes. So let's see. Athletics is twelve. Endurance is twelve. Intimidate is eight. Insight is seven. Knowledge is seven. Mend is eleven. Acrobatics. Eh. All of the dexterity skills are at. Eight. Um, focus is at eight. Fast talk is at eight. Uh, leadership is fourteen. Let's see, your toughness is five. Your resistance is four. That's pretty. That's pretty good for for soak. Your dodge and willpower are, 
power five. Let's see, for your cap check, which is how you're going to be handling attacks, your critical is two, your accuracy is 11, your penetration is six, you have one each in special action limits, and two tide turner charges. Um, while I'm putting that in, Zan, would you mind giving him the skinny as to what the cap check entails? Yep. So the cap check is a roll. It it rolls against all three values. Um, if you roll under the A, your accuracy, you hit. If you roll under P, penetration, you bypass uh, the soaks that enemies have. You, you give piercing damage. So... If they have, say, a toughness of two and you're dealing physical damage and you deal an eight, normally you'd only deal six because the two reduces it. But if it's piercing, you'll deal the eight. And then critical, if you if you roll under critical, it is a max damage for whatever damage die of the damage dealing uh, action you're performing. Uh, and it bypasses um, defenses. So let's say you roll damage as 2d12 normally and you roll crit on your uh, cap check, you will deal 24 damage to whatever you just hit, period. End of story. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah, it's a it's a, a very fun system. Now, there's a couple things regarding intelligence and dexterity we have to, we have to handle because you do get you do get a bone you do get a one point bonus uh, for special for one special action limit. Um, the three types are trigger, sustain, and amplify. Amplify is essentially bo is essentially boosting. It's not far removed from say kicker in Magic: The Gathering. Sustain is self-explanatory, and trigger is trap cards. So uh, which of the which of and the action limit determines how many of those you can utilize in one turn. Okay. So, which of those three limits do you think you're gonna you're going to increase? Can you go over the first one again? I'm sorry. So, amp amplify uh, amplify actions are actions that add effects to other actions. Like, okay. when you when you use an amp effect, it usually adds some sort of additional utility or a condition or even just additional damage to an action you're taking. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I might go with Amplify then. All right. So that brings that means you can do two Amplify actions in a given turn. And for Dexterity, you do get a movement bonus, which you can either put on Move or shift. Normally, you can move up to, for a move action. You can move up to four squares, and only one square for shift. But you can move through friendlies when do, when doing a um, shift action. And you basically just get to choose one of these to put an additional like movement square on. Yep. I'd say it's probably more beneficial to, given you can move through friendlies, like it would technically move you two squares if you're moving through a friendly square. Mm hmm. Okay. Um, I would say put another point into movement then. All right. That means that your movement cap is um, fa. You can move. You can move through friendlies in, in both cases. Um, shifting is akin, akin to the shift action that was in 4e or um, moving up moving out of someone's threat range yeah oh um, so that takes so that takes care of that and there's no there's no additional effect for strength and resilience so there's now we get to um at, now we get to actions. Yeah, tactician actions. We're starting at tier one in, in this in Songweave as well. Yeah, although I have to, I have to correct myself. Um, 
before we get to actions, we have to handle inventory. So go to pay go on page 17. There's go, there's going to be a selection. There's going to be a selection of melee weapons, range weapons, offhand, and armor. Um. So first thing I need is going to be your choice of melee weapon, and no matter what your class is, everybody has access to a melee and a ranged attack. Yep, makes sense. I'm going with a one-handed sword for the melee weapon. Alright. So, sword. And what are you going for the since you are doing one hand, where are you going for the offhand? I'm gonna go with the medium shield, one toughness, one dodge seems like a good spread. Alright. Which means your Dodge goes up to six, and your toughness goes up to six. So, ranged weapon, what are you going to go for? Throwing knives seems fun. I'm going to go with throwing knives. All right. And armor? <laughs> Uh, heavy armor. All right, so that brings your toughness up to seven. And were you inf were you informed about um about keepsakes? Uh, yes, but he's sort of a vagabond, so I didn't really choose one. Everybody gets one. Everyone gets the Emberwind Spark. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. And everybody gets the Emberwind Spark and one keepsake. Fair enough. And... And I... Th when it comes to keep, when it comes to keepsakes, let me see where, because it's. Let me see where that is. Put in. Okay, it's gonna. It starts on. Each keepsake will ha will have its own effect. Um. The lit the full list of keepsake effects is going to be on page seventy nine. And as an aside, I do appreciate. I've mentioned this before, but I think, but Zan and I had appreciated how the list of effects is categorized. Mm -hmm. Instead of, here's a list of here's a list of effects. Figure it out. Yeah, the list of effects ha has it categorized so that you know exactly what type of effect you're getting. Yeah. Um. So which which of um I want you to go th look through that and pick one. Uh, I'd say heal one adjacent hero fifteen HP. All right, so that's in the health series. Mm -hmm. but... It's a combat fast once per action, or once mm -hmm. per combat, I should say. Yep. Oh. Uh. What for now? Keepsakes can take a can take a lot of different forms. What form do you see? Do you see the keep this particular keepsake taking? Sort of like a a memento. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, perhaps a a cloak given to him by his mentor. All right. Alright. 
So now we get now we get to the the fun bit when it comes to um, anchors action. and dead whites. Nope, we got oh, action. no, actions. Actions, yeah, mm -hmm. first. True. So let's see: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, get, nine. It's nine. Yep. So <laughs> on on seventy-three in the PDF yep. mm -hmm. count. Yep, you have access to to nine class traits and class traits and class actions from the tier one list. That means he could literally take all of his class actions and one class trait. We're spoiled for choice, boys. Mm hmm. And Shauna. <laughs> That's um. I assume everything here, including the class tie turner actions, are selectable. Tie turners we're handling later. Okay. That's a that is a special case. Tie turners are their own thing. That's entirely fair. But uh. All of these have have a um, an action economy, as you can see in the speed column. Um, unless you have a feature that gives you more, you start with four AP. Uh, slow actions cost two AP. Fast cost one. Free cost nil. Uh, and uh, you essentially traits are usually something that you just keep around for for funds these um, they are they are akin to passives or feats yeah they're they're little tricks most, yeah most yeah. Time, most times there are there are exceptions but as a general rule traits are not our um, passive affairs whereas the actions are your active are a lot of your active stuff All right, well, I'll take a leader's comfort for sure. Settle the score looks fairly interesting, so I'll take that as well. Um, make sure make sure to write those in the chat so I can, so I can and so I can enter them as needed. So, first first one you said was leader's comfort. Okay, who rolled? Oh, no, no, I didn't roll. Oh, sorry, you said in chat. I put it in the, um... Yeah, in the in the Discord chat is what is what I meant. He put, he put them in the in the chat for roll 20. <laughs> All right. Let's see. And that is a exploit with a fast speed. Target is self... There's no range. I'll just yeah. edit that post each time I add one. Mm -hmm. I'm not spamming chat. I for I forgot that a uh, a lot of uh, tacticians funsies are um <laughs> getting rid of your soak values to do other things. <laughs> yep. So. Turning point and throne breaker seem interesting, so I'll grab those. Mm -hmm. See, so Definitely that in general looks like a passive. That seems like it would be pretty useful. Plus, mm -hmm. what does willpower do in particular? Willpower is your is your magic um, equivalent to dodge. Willpower is is damage prevention, aka mm -hmm. if you roll. If you rolls a proper willpower check against a magical attack, you won't take damage in the first place. Mm -hmm. I'm going to snag that then, because it seems pretty useful to just give the party plus one willpower. So let's see. You also get the ability to alter one roll result in each encounter by plus or minus four. Remember that part too. That's pretty damn cool. 
mm -hmm. can sort of uh, mess with an enemy's ability to uh, resist damage. It's essentially a free Emberwind spark. That's pretty cool. That's definitely going to come in handy. So. And it's a free Ember Wind Spark that happens more often than the Ember Wind Spark because when you when you use your Ember Wind Spark, it's gone until you hit the next milestone, and a milestone is usually the next chapter in the journey, or or the next scene. It de it depends on it. Re it's really it's really up to me. The GM. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm putting in. Settle the score, which is a tr which is a trigger. Uh, if it activates, if a hero takes damage greater than zero from a f after barrier values from a foe's action. Uh, and it get that hero's next damage dealing action gets a bonus equal to the damage taken at a cap of fifteen. Essentially, if you were to use this um, and someone takes five damage from an action, their next damage dealing action gains an extra five damage. Mm -hmm. And it says the target is one hero, which includes yourself. Yeah. If it said one other hero, you could not include yourself. Let's see. Turning point. That is a, that is a general exploit. You said nine total, correct? Yeah. There are there are eight total class actions in tier one and three class traits. So you can mix and match as you please between all of them. Mm-hmm. There's a there's eleven there, so you'll only be able to not take two. Let's see, turning point at on its own. Uh, removes what removes one stack of one condition from a from a target. Uh, if you choose its if you choose its amp, you reduce your barrier barrier values to zero until the start of your next turn and remove all stacks of that condition instead. Basically, you temporarily lose your soak to remove a condition from someone completely. Mm -hmm. So let's see. Next one you picked was Thronebreaker. So now we're getting into things that are that are actually into actual offense. Seems like a good idea to have a decent mix, right? So I'm just mm -hmm. a one-trick pony. I'll be worthless. That's usually the way it goes in tabletop. It is physically impossible to be a one-trick pony in this game. It, oh, well, yeah. Yeah, it seems that it seems that way. You say that, but. Daka? <laughs> Just because your most effective move was to Daka does not mean that you were a one-trick pony. It's just that that was the most effective path to take. Mm -hmm. We and know what your actions all were. Yeah. All right, so Thronebreaker, that is... Um, that's going to be... Me that's going to be... Melee range and dealing melee weapon... There we go. Selected all nine. So leader's comfort, settle the score, turning point, throne breaker, decorated yep. general, insightful leader, two pronged attack, valiant strike, and battlefield tempo. Yep. Um, ba battlefield tempo is super good if you get into the first hero slot as well, uh, because then you get to ignore its usage limit. So, throne breaker does uh, me melee weapon damage plus two. Two times tier. Yep. So in this in this case, it'd be doing um, two plus two. Yep. Yeah. Plus yeah. Plus two. If you do the amp, you can instead do, you can you can do seven times the fo, seven times foe ranks above grunt damage. And the ranks, and, I believe, were grunt, veteran, elite, and boss. Um, grunt, awaken, awakened, right. um, elite, and end boss. Mm -hmm. um, I will note in advance there are not going to be any boss tier um, foes in the, in this campaign. The highest tier that is going to go is elite. But Thronebreaker is meant to be a a 
um, ba basically, basically a, a boss a, crusher. A, yeah, boss crusher. <laughs> it's 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 absolutely meant to be a, a boss buster, mm -hmm. uh, because grunts you're probably never going to use throne breaker on. Um, it'd just be more effective to use your normal melee weapon attack. Seems well, like you... throne breaker something you'd use on like a really nasty enemy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because even if it's just a, uh, even if at that point it's just an elite bow, that's seven times two, because it's two ranks above grunt. So that's fourteen extra damage, right then and there. And keep in mind that average HP starting uh, Emberwind is twenty-five ish to thirty ish, so that's a lot of damage. No, I'm 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 not going to imitate the uh, flex tape guy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, I still love those goofy commercials, especially John Tron's parody of it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so let's see, decorated general. That is a passive. Yep, the plus one willpower to all heroes, and you may. Alter one roll result each encounter by plus or minus four. Mm -hmm. Good stuff. And that that also that also means that it's even even if it's just even if it's just what's once per encounter, it means you have the Emberwind Spark twice. Yes, <laughs> he he has he has uh, he has what we like to call RNG fuckery, monk. Mm -hmm. My experience in tabletop RNG fuckery is always beneficial. If you have the option to take it, take it. Yep. So next is insightful leader. I think he took all three of the traits. Yep. And a pl you can see that a playstyle is starting to emerge from these cho from these choices. It's a general. Exploit speed is free. Well, like, and here's a case of target one other hero. Yep. Insightful leader, you just point at one other hero and go, yeah, you get to make your next fast action as a free action. And that's once per round. And that doesn't even eat up any of your AP. You just get to point to a friend and go, your next action is a free action. Mm -hmm. Which is damn beneficial like i can imagine that's going to be used a lot and it's since it's action, since me. it's since it's field it has no range yeah you can point to anyone on the any any other hero on the map no matter how close or far they are from you mm -hmm. so if you know that that one of our erstwhile friends here is in another part of the battlefield taking out somebody that needs to be taken out quick you can just be like, how you doing over there? Yeah, your next fast action is free. And then they completely slaughter it. Mm -hmm. Or they bunk their rolls. So next is, is two next is two pronged attack, which is also which is also a field. Yep. And a one other hero. Mm-hmm. If a foe occupies an adjacent square to you, your target may make one basic attack against that foe as a free action once per round. A free action now, meaning mm. you point at them and say, hit this guy, and they do it. Yeah. <laughs> and it's a free action for you, too. So you're next to a guy, someone else is near enough that guy to hit him in melee, and you're just like, hey, buddy, hit him. So two-pronged attack. So next is Valiant Strike. That's gross. That's just gross. Um, not to be confused with Prince Valiant. Good comic though. Good comic. If you, if um, for some of you that might be a deep cut, especially if you, re if you read it through the sun through the, the Sunday, Sunday morning. Yep, the Sunday morning funnies. Mm -hmm. <sighs> um. I, I know a lot of people. Yeah, I know a lot of people would get would 
will cite like Garfield or something as their favorite from the Sunday Funnies or Peanuts in your, if you're in the Midwest. For me, my favorite was Pearls Before Swine. Yes. I always liked uh, the Ornery Duck character. I can't remember his name. Do you have any idea how little that narrows it down? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> it was like Filbert or something like that. No, I think I got the name wrong. Give me one second. Why are you thinking of Dilbert? You know, like... <laughs> Actually, I, like... I think he might be going for the uh, other one that was created by uh, Garfield's creator, the, the one on the farm. Possi possibly. Uh, so... Dilbert was my favorite. <laughs> Uh, Bill, Scott and, Adams Silver, it's fantastic. And of of course, would it surprise you at all if I say that my favorite out of Pearls Before Swine is any time Rat was was on the comic? <laughs> Not surprised at all. Because Rat is an absolute is an absolute dickhead, and As tends to abuse implies. the creator of the comic on multiple occasions. As his name implies, mm -hmm. Rat so, is a rat. Yep. So. Valiant Strike, it's normal melee damage, but you do get you do get a two square range instead of one. Uh, if you hit a ally can make a shift action right afterwards. As a free action, yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's see, Valiant Strike. Basically you hit from a little further away and friends get to move for free. Mm -hmm. Well, one friend gets to shift uh, for enough. free. Yeah, funny so, enough, Alan Hobbs is sort of my favorite comic, uh, funny, uh, funny, uh, funny comic in general. But I actually didn't have familiarity with Alan Hobbs from the newspaper. Uh, I I collected the Treasury volumes and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And of course, yeah. you guys wouldn't be surprised to know mine was Farside. Oh, yeah, Farside, Farside. Was good, man. Farside's good stuff. Yes, um, it is. Well, Dilbert I have the complete my... collection of hardcovers on my shelf, so. Uh, see, I only have one, uh, unfortunately, one volume of Farside, but yeah, it's a, uh, it's a, uh, there's a lot of sarcastic humor in Farside, so I enjoyed it a great deal. Yep. My my favorite, uh, my favorite, I think one of my favorite Farsides is still uh, the open washing machine with the cat fud sign. <laughs> Which I think that's appropriate given some of the orange cat. Um, stories you've told um, Kay about how orange, <laughs> how orange cats are really, really, really stupid. Yep. Yep. As, as wasn't there one with the cat getting caught in the getting caught in the washing machine? Actually, it was the, the dryer. I remember the something like that. We had one of those. It, so that, that was a strange sound to wake up to at six in the morning. So for those of you in the chat. So, uh, our cat Sid, his, his, uh, father is owned by my dad and my stepmom and my younger siblings. Well, his name is Drax. Drax is a big old 20 pound ball of muscle and fluff. And he is the cuddliest boy on the planet. He is such a sweetheart as befitting an orange cat. Problem is, is that he is also as dumb as a bucket of rocks. Because uh, my second youngest sibling, Sammy, was uh, changing out the loads from and switching from washer to dryer, and they didn't see Drax jump into the dryer. So, Sammy, being oblivious to what our uh, favorite little fluffy boy has done, closes the dryer, turns it on, and you just hear thun. Thun, 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 thun. It is at that point. Drax knew. He, he fucked, fucked up. up. <laughs> okay, at this moment, he knew he fucked up. The last, um, the last one that he that Ein ha that Ein has is Battlefield Tempo, and this is just nuts. Battlefield Tempo, fast action, targets one other hero at range five. Your target may make their next slow action as a fast action, two per round. If you occupy the first hero slot in the initiative slot system, ignore the uses limit on battlefield tempo. Which, Ein, 
We don't roll initiative for this game. Ah, there. But, uh... We're constantly means... fighting over who gets to go first. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's, what's really fun is what this thing does is if we need everybody to take their big slow actions as fast actions so that they can do them... Uh... They can do at least two of them in a turn because you'd use one as a fast and the next as a slow. Um, Ein could go first in the first slot and then use all four of his AP as fast actions to assign four people this uh, this ability because he ignores the usage limit if he's first in the slots. Mm -hmm. oh, so the, basically, Lay and Kay and I will have to learn to take the third and fourth slot. <laughs> well, no. that's if that's if I want to give everybody that stuff. It, it may not always be necessary, but that's an option. Sometimes we might want something else, like being able to heal you guys, kind of nonsense. Mm. Oh yeah. But I need you to go look. Now we look at the tide turners, and tide turners are more powerful than normal actions. But you're only going to get a certain amount of slots per encounter. Yeah, we're not we're not doing that. You use your big thing, and then you gotta wait eight hours to use it again. No, fuck that. So, he pick, has two tie turner charges. Yeah. Every, well, every, everybody gets two tie turner two actions. Yeah. Everybody so, has two slots. Pick two of the tier one tie turner actions. take triumphant return for starters all right like triumphant return if any foe becomes fallen target hero within five squares of you re rec either re uh, recovers from fallen if possible and heals their maximum hp that seems pretty important that's why i took that one like oh uh you get back up well, first, someone else has got to die, though. Yes, yes, an enemy. You die. Enemy. You get back up. Mm hmm. Which. Ooh. Like, last. Just when we were playing the first time through, we barely had anyone fall on our side. Ugh. So I would say we could keep it just to be safe. I mean, we, we get to, once we go up in a tier, we get to choose new actions if we want to. Mm -hmm. I mean, and we're going to want to, because then you have access to two, tier two actions. Oh, man. So, what's the other one you were, you were picking? Uh, intercept seems like it, it would be a pretty good tactical use, so we'll grab that. All right. So, trigger... Exploit. That's a free action. You're getting. You got a lot of free. You got a fair few free actions. Yeah, but monk, that trigger action. If one other hero becomes the target of a foe's action, effect. Cancel that action. You may. You and one of those heroes may swap occupied squares. Cover. <laughs> it's not, it's not just cover. It cancels the action, monk. Mm -hmm. You don't even take damage. Or... That's, that seems ridiculous. So I looked at it and went, wow. Um... It's a free action, too. It's a free action for that trigger. Of course, it costs you a Tide Turner charge, but still. Mm -hmm. It's just like, oh, yeah, you're going to hit my some of my friends. Um, no, that action doesn't happen. By the way, I'm in front of you now. What are you going to do about it? And my friend's away from you now. What are you going to do about it? I know it's. I know it sounds close, but I am not qualified. I'm not going it's to. Not, it. it's, it's not. It's not cold steel. Cold steel is reserved for me at this point, monk. Considering I'm playing pugilist. Yep. So, let me... so the final thing, and this is where primer part two is going to come in. Um. The, the same five-point rule regarding anchors and dead weights comes into play. Okay. You've got five points to spend. If you spend it, if you, if you pick dead weights, you get, you get its cost refunded. 
you cannot take more than three points of dead weights. This is a merits flaw system, I'm guessing. More, more or less, these are, these are more these are more for um these are going to be more for on the roleplay end than on the combat end. So, to read the tips from the anchors section. Please keep in mind that the primary purpose of Anchors is to improve the immersive experience in your hero and the world not to power game with and should be treated as such. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fair. Pages that located on? But the, um, the Anchors and Keepsakes proper, that's in... You should be able to see a link called Primer Part Two if you scroll up a bit. That's where the list is because there's no, there isn't a set anchor and deadweight list in the um, hero manual. It is specific to each module. Oh, okay. Yeah, the uh, the primer he has has a list of different uh, anchors and deadweights to use. And there isn't a specific separate list for anchors and deadweights. You, it's how you interpret them. Yeah. Are they things that you're good at, or are they things that are going to be a hindrance to you? Mm -hmm. I've already decided mine, too. Yep. And... You've decided. I've got my entire character ready to roll. Mm -hmm. Same. Um. Except for maybe my actions. I have way too many to choose from. Uh, under oh, was it under Anchor's Deadweights? Uh, there's one tracking that seems pretty interesting. All right, so unlabeled interests. So tracking. That's so you've got three points left. Fine. Yep, sorry, I'm um I'm trying not to talk too much because one of the dogs is bork borking like a madman. Zan, did you let the dogs out? No. That's as far as I'm going with that joke. I figured. <laughs> Appraisal seems pretty interesting. Oh, wait, no, sorry. Field medicine is probably a better choice, though. Because my character is more of a support role. All right, so that's three po points. So you got two You got two left. Uh, clockwork. Clockwork sounds interesting. I like that one. All right. It sounded like you were going for a vagabond, so are you... Is it a case where um, Augustus is just a is just a cell sword? Sort of, yes. All, all right, I can I can get that. So next, uh, next. Uh, oh, before before I. Uh, before I go, before I even go into who, into next, oh, got to take I'm care of. It. Oh. Getting ready to post yep. it. Yep, and I and I am taking care of one small detail, and that is do, that is doing the upload. It's going to take a bit. Oh, um, I will I will handle the the token. Well, we won't do the tokens tonight. Um, right now, that's just some. That's just something. Yeah, I completely forgot about them. Yeah, just set um set up the. T you already have that link, so just set up the tokens after the fact. Yeah, I'll get them done by next Saturday. Mm -hmm. All right, here All right. is so the first look at John's character for you, Monk. <laughs> and when I'm um, waiting for your word. 
All right, Hank. I'm just making sure that. Um... Oh, do I need to do anything else? Um, we we're, we're on your end. We're we are more we are more or less done. Um, right now I'm just, right now I'm just making sure that you can actually see your char your character sheet. Although with a, yep. with a name like Augustus, mm -hmm. with a name like Augustus, I was I was for a second I was thinking were you okay? Who ended up making? Um, uh, that was accidentally me. I accidentally hit it and thought I closed it out. Right. Okay. So I guess I guess John is I guess John is up next. As per your list, yes, he is. Mm-hmm. Am I good to go? Well, no, it should be Coops who's next. No, it was Coops. Sign Coops, John, John Kane, Coops. Neff, Rick, me. Yeah, you yeah you had, they had Coops listed. Oh, well, but, oh, well, we'll, we'll just move Coops down. I have Coops third on the list on my end, oops. Anyway. We'll do it live. <laughs> we'll do it live! Fuck it! All right. Okay. Am I good to go? <laughs> yep. Yep. Let's... Let's let the rest of the world see what see what madness John will be bringing forth. <laughs> I introduce you to Gungnir. And yes, the inspiration is obvious, but at least I didn't make Thor. <laughs> yeah, for context, he is he is playing a warrior. And specifically using the Elysian Legionnaire subclass, which <laughs> has has the has the title of has the title of ride the light, uh, the subtitle of ride the lightning. Yeah, but with Elysian Legionnaire, that would mean it's Zeus, not Thor. That's very true. <laughs> but it's okay. Because as I as I uh, told Lady K when. I watched her making part of this. It reminds us of our of our um of our dwarf druid from Heavens and Heresies monk. Mm. It reminds me at least. The man who <laughs> really, <laughs> really, really hates elves. And anyone else in his swamp because <laughs> Get wow. your fucking knife ears out of my fucking forest and marsh, you dumb bastards. I finally found it. I was mister I was mister misremembering the name. It's Mallard Fillmore. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's a fucking I love Fillmore. Anyway. anyway. Okay. So, for attribute generation, are you going to be rolling the dice, or are you going to go standard array? Uh, I'm going to go roll the dice. I feel, I feel lucky today. Okay, well, do you? Punk. Punk. <laughs> okay. So, the rolls you got are 7, 8, 4, and 6. You want to re-roll, or do you want to apply that set? I'm not sure. It's, uh, is this specifically for one uh, set of attributes? That's for all no, this, four. Yeah. Th Seven, eight, four, and six. You know, actually, that doesn't sound half bad. That's all actually right. better than the standard, right? Oh, all right. Not to mention, he still gets two extra points at the end of all of it. All right. So what? So where's the seven going? Let's see. <laughs> just as a rem just as a reminder, I'm gonna put the. That's that's your spread. And that's to be split between the four main attributes. Yep. Yep. All right. All right. In that uh, case, uh, we will put the eight in strength. in strength. All right. We'll put. We'll put the seven in dexterity. We'll put the six in resilience. And then we'll put the four in intelligence. All right, and hang on, hang on a sec, a sec. 
a second. Oh, so... Actually, I can just adjust it. So, eight in strength, seven in dexterity, and what's going for intelligence? Intelligence, intelligence is getting the four. All right, so resilience is getting the... Six. Six, yeah. Yep. Intelligence is getting the four. So, where is your two freebies going? Um, we'll put the two freebies. Uh, we'll put one in strength and one in dexterity. All right. So, you have strength nine, intelligence four, dexterity eight, and resilience six. So since you have intelligence four, you get you get one bonus to special action limits. You're gonna put that in trigger, sustain, or amplify. Uh. Let's, let's see. Let's go ahead and put, that, and put that in sustain. Yeah, All right. druids have a lot of sustain actions. A lot of sustain actions. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, no, I'm a warrior, not a druid. Oh, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Which, See, that being the case, I'd recommend putting it in amp. Yeah, you know what? Yeah, you're, you right. Know what? you're right. Let's go ahead and do that. All right. And for dexterity, you get two. Po you get two points on mo on movement bonus that you can spend to either boost um, shift actions or moved actions, or one in each. Mm-hmm. Let's do one, Let's in, do each. one in each. All right. So you get two squares of shift and five squares of movement. And now we go with the skills. So are you going to do the occupation approach or manually pick your skills? Um, actually, I already see a, a, an occupation that I was eyeing that would fit. I'm gonna go with a, uh, a blacksmith. And right, what's the major skill for that? Major skill, major skill is, endurance. is endurance. All right, so major skill is endurance, and minor skills is athletics, insight, and mend. Correct. So, by the way, you are you're already a le you're already a leg up on HP. Um, I had 25, <laughs> you have 27. Again! Not a huge jump, but here we go again! 27. Mm -hmm. So... Let's see, dexterity is 8. Resilience is 6. So let me put, let me put in the barrier and, res and resistance. So toughness is 6. Resistance is four, and athletics is 13, endurance is 15, intimidate is nine, insight is 11, knowledge is seven, mend is 11. Let's see, your dodge is six, your willpower is five, Acrobatics, slight, stealth, and sleight of hand are nine each. So, I know some of you are thinking of of that Hitler joke. Make it, make it if you're thinking it. Um, <laughs> and your focus, fast talk, and leadership are all eights. Your critical is three. Your accuracy is twelve. Your penetration is seven. You have a special action limit of trigger one, sustain one, and amplify two. And two tide turners. All right. So I'm going to I'm going to jump into actions for a bit. What maneuver are you going to pick? Um, 
Um, considering that I'm an elite uh, legion legionnaire, the weather probably wouldn't be an issue for me, so I'm gonna take the weather maneuver. All right. That basically means that you ha that with a with a endurance roll you can ignore difficult terrain. Yep. Not just difficult terrain, but anything with a local field effect. Mm-hmm. And that can be a that can be a, a huge thing considering some of the local field effects I've seen on on actions. Oh, All right. Yeah. yeah. So now we ha now we're going into equipment. Oh. So. First off, what are you going for for your melee weapon? Let's see. Let's see. We're, we, we, were we, we were talking about this. Obviously, Obviously you, you can see by the image. I'm axe. going for an axe. Uh, one hand or two hand? One hand. One hand, because we're also getting a shield. Medium or heavy? Or light, medium, or heavy, I should say. Uh, we'll, go uh, we'll go medium. All right. So that's going to give you... A dodge of seven and oh, a toughness of seven. So, what are you going for? Ranged weapons? Uh, I think I'll go for a crossbow. All right. And armor? Go. We'll, go light, we'll go light armor. All right, so that's going to bring your dodge up to eight. And do you have a keepsake in mind? I was actually I was actually, debating, I'm debating between the two, between the but I was thinking of making one of my uh, one of my equipments the keepsake because. Being the warrior that I am, I think I'm making the shield my keepsake. Uh, let me double check what I'm going to make that effect. Let me scroll down here. Uh, for the record, that shield was drawn from reference, and it's called a—it's just called a storm shield, honey. Mm -mm. Let's, go ahead, Let's go ahead and give it uh, plus five uh, toughness until the, right the start of your next turn. All right, which si which um series is that in? Barrier series. Barrier series. All right. So let me scroll down to barrier series. Once per milestone, and it's a free action. So, which one? So you're going with plus five toughness? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So let me put that in. Plus five toughness until the start of your next turn. Next crossbow. Medium shield. Light armor. It'd be funny as hell if you said you were going with robes. <laughs> <laughs> and I, did that with, I did that with a spiritualist already. Mm-hmm. All right. So now we get to actions, and first let me put in um, weather. So that uses endurance. Speed is free. And... When you enter a square with a local field effect, you may make an endurance check. If you succeed, ignore the local field effect. <laughs> so, go with axe. 
target is one foe, range is one, and that is 2d8 plus 2. Okay, I'll put that little detail in there later. Um, and crossbow. Let's see, target is one foe, range is seven. And that's 2d8 plus one. Both of them, both of them targeting uh, toughness. And now we get to class actions. And remember, the rule is six from all of them tier one, but six from your normal, um, fr from your normal class, and three from your subclass. So we'll do the warrior class ones first. Um, right. I did put in all of the subclass PDFs that I have in the drive folder I've got for Cloyster. All I've got right. Both of those PDFs loaded up, so I'm looking at both now. Um. Make sure to type out your choices of actions in the in the cloister chat so I have them as we go. All right, all right. Let's see. I think I'm going to start with a good old cleave. All right, so cleave, the general exploit speed is slow Let's see target is melee weapon range or so, sorry target is one foe range is it's going to be melee one and let's see melee weapon damage plus 3 plus 3 times tier damage and amp effect inspect expend one slow action to inflict eight stacks of vulnerability <laughs> and gi and given what we have with Ein's uh, with with Ein regarding slow actions that's going to be interesting so Number two, what do you get? What's that? What's that one's gonna be? Well, considering that I'm already aiming up to be the tank again unintentionally, might as well make sure I actually play a tank this time and gonna throw in taunt. Mm -hmm. And if you li if you listen close, you can hear an NFL referee throwing the flag. <laughs> Seriously, those taunting rules are fucking stupid. Hey, what, at least it's not Clash of the Castle. Okay, so Taunt. One that's targeting one foe. Range is five. Until the start of your next turn, all actions by hit foe must include you as the tar as one of the targets twice per round. Which, well, it's it's taunting it's taunting in an RPG. You know how this works. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Not, really Not really much difference from any other game. Uh, um. Good old good old drawing aggro. So option three. Let's, ooh, you know what? Let's go ahead and go for lethal drive. All right. Lethal Drive, that is a sustain exploit. As long as I'm oh. moving or shifting, or as long as I'm moving around, I get uh, I get more damage. I get, to get da I get to add some extra damage. So, let's see. Target is self. That's not going to have... It. And... Most sustain effects are just going to be repeat effect, but that's for the best. Mm -hmm. uh, so until the start of your next turn, turn penetration into damage to your next damage dealing melee action whenever you take a move action, max plus 10. Your penetration right now is 7. 
And well, we remember how ridiculous how ridiculous Sam was with turning ridiculous amount of penetration into damage. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. So what's in slot four for you? Um. I don't know why I wasn't that powerful to the mix. Get, get myself one passive trait. All right. Okay, so that's a passive. No speed, no target, no range. Let me add that into none. So, plus two penetration. So your penetration it is nine. So we have we have once again a case where somebody's gonna do penetration stupid easy. Because <laughs> that's only th your accuracy right now is twelve. Let's see, T um tier pl tier plus two damp. Plus two damage to all melee damage dealing actions. So, your your uh, stuff like axe cleave are all go are all going to do uh, are going to do an extra three damage. So that's slot four. What do you got for slot five? Well, considering how well it worked for Sam last time around, I didn't see no reason not to include bone shatter blow into the mix. Mm-hmm. Oh, see, Especially with that, that powerful is, attribute, that's going to work out really well. So, let's see, that's an exploit. Speed is slow. Target is one foe. Range is going to be melee one for you. So, melee weapon damage plus twice your plus twice your tier. If you penetrate or critical with Bone Shatter Blow, um, plus penetration to damage. And that's going to be even worse if you combine that with Lethal Drive. <laughs> uh, and there's the and of course there's the note that performing it with Auto Crit, Piercing, or Hit. Or hitting a f hitting a foe with fragility deals bonus damage. So let me put that in there. <laughs> okay, so that's one, two, three. So slot six. Well, I haven't added any tide turners to my list yet, and there just happens to be the perfect one to complement all of these skills. Let me throw in Grand Divide. Uh, we're not at tide turners yet. Oh, that's, oh, that's different. Yeah, those thing. are okay, separate. I didn't realize. Mm. My, apologies. my apologies. Okay, in that case, well, seeing as, well, as, as though I see it on almost both, both, both characters character sheets, or both lists, or both lists let's make sure, let's I'm, make able sure I'm able to defend, defend as much as I am to uh, attack, throwing in deflect. All right. So you deflect, that is a trigger. That is a trigger exploit. Speed is fast. Let's see. Target is one hero. Range is, me is melee weapon range. Which, of course, does mean it can include yourself. See trigger yep. condition if one or more heroes takes takes damage and effect minus five to the damage value of that action minimum zero and because of how it's written how damage value is written up it is possible I th I was actually never mind I was gonna say that you that it would reduce damage um before barriers are applied but no you have to take no. the you have to take damage so that doesn't apply. No, uh, but uh, do me a favor, check out the, check uh, move, the uh, move list for the Elysian Legionnaire, and check the, and check the, the actions list towards at the, the towards the bottom. It sounds like you've got one of your Tide Turners earmarked. No, 
No. More specifically, more specifically deflect, deflect is written twice. there twice. Yeah. Yeah, I don't I don't know why that is. <laughs> hey, uh, hey, uh, Derek, right? Derek, right? That's the guy who created the game? Mm-hmm. Hey, Derek, uh, you might want to look into that. Well, it is possible that that um there may, that there may have been an update I didn't gr I didn't grab, so I will check that later. Yeah. Well, yeah. Both both of these deflects do the they're same thing. They're written yeah, different. Yeah, they're written differently, but they do the exact same thing as the one in the regular warrior list. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, of the three of the three slots you have for Elysian Legionnaire, what are you gonna go with? All right. Um, let's, let's see. Well, I need at least some range attacks besides my crossbow, so let me go ahead and throw in Blitzbolt. All right. So Blitzbolt, that is a general spell. See, it is a slow plus fast action. Target it. Um, it is targets one foe. Range is seven. And let's see. it is doing tier D twelve. Damage versus resistance. Actually, I'm going to put that as the amplify type so I can put that part in. Amp effect. Expend one fast action to teleport to an unoccupied square adjacent to hit foe. Now we have nothing personnel. <laughs> huh? Huh? Now the He's... Cold Steel Curse returns. <laughs> Monk, this is just a prelude to the madness. We haven't even gotten to the Pugilist, where all of the Cold Steel references are. Mm -hmm. But I'm glad I can have a, a fellow troll along with me. <laughs> so, with Tide Turners, you do have two. You have two slots. Uh, don't, uh, don't I still have two more? Uh... Oh right, so Action. all right. <laughs> My bad. Wait a minute. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Slow the slow the train, slow down. The train down. All right. <laughs> um. Well, well, I think we're. I think we're. I think working, working with that. Working I'm gonna go with arc impulse. Arc impulse. All right. Let's see, arc impulse and. Okay, that was weird. I don't know why I put put it up there but I can deal so that is a sustain bell see tar that is a free action target self so obviously range is, n is not a factor not doing damage so the next time you hit with a melee action you plus one use of a flash action until the start of your next turn. Um, are you go are you going with the flash with the flash trade as your final? Yep. Yep. The lightning, the lightning spire. Because mm -hmm. otherwise it wouldn't make otherwise it wouldn't make uh, much sense. So. But what does make sense with our group, monk? The only thing that makes sense is that nothing makes sense. Exactly. So, let's see, general, spell, and it, lightning spire is a fast action, targets one foe, range is three, and hang on a Hang on a second. Roll twenty screwed up because it ended up opening the it ended up opening the wrong one. Oh, don't you love it when that happens? Must so, be a data enzyme. Why? 
technology. It loves, it loves to give us the middle, middle finger. finger. Exactly. Okay. So, Flash. <laughs> John caught it. I understood. I understood. I understood that reference. Thank you, John. I knew at least <laughs> one person would. So, let me. So this is going to be doing. Oh. Tier D8, so one D, so one D8 damage versus resistance. Uh, once per once per round, and if you hit a foe with a melee action, flash actions are free actions until the start of your next turn. <laughs> which is which is a very good proc for arc impulse. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah, head with an arc impulse, or activate the arc impulse to a melee attack, turn around, lightning spire. Boom. Mm -hmm. So I know you you are I know you're leaning tank, but you are still doing the shit wrecker part of tank. Yes. Yes. So for your for your tie turner actions, you can choose between um warrior class tie turner actions or Elysian Legionnaire tie turners. Okay, I can't have one of both then, huh? Damn. Right. No, All you right. can have one of both. Oh, I can? Oh, I can? Okay. okay. How, many how many do I have? You still got two. Okay. Okay. That works, because that's, exactly that's exactly the... I already know exactly which two I'm going to pick. Like I said earlier? Like I said earlier? Grand, grand divide. divide. All right. So Alien weapon, weapon damage and inflict fragility. fragility. Mm -hmm. Combine, that, Combine with that with my bone shatter blow. blow. That's a that's a wombo combo. Yep, which is the exact kind of thing that this that this game builds so much of its design around, and why I why I picked it for our grand comeback. So melee one. So melee weapon damage and inflict fragility. So let me make sure melee weapon damage. And as far as as far as fragil as far as fragility goes, let me I'm gonna, have to, I'm gonna have to grab the hero. It's not in the hero card. Ah, here it is. Fragi it's in the conditions end of things. So, fragil fragility. All damage combatant takes has the piercing property. Fragility is removed next round at the end of the combatant's turn. But again, if I turn that right around and hit the freaking bone shatter blow on top of it, wombo combo. Mm-hmm. <laughs> As for my other tide turner, yo, we joked about it earlier, but fuck it. Let's take that joke and run with it. We're going to ride the lightning. Fuck you, Metallica. You ain't suing us. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't the first thought that came to my head, Monk. Exidon Ogi, Raidos the Lightning! <laughs> of course. Guilty Gear, everybody. The mm -hmm. best fighting game series until Strive. <laughs> yep. And let's see, that is a free action. Target is one unoccupied square. Range is seven. Teleport to your target. 
Inflict paralysis on all foes adjacent to that square. <laughs> <laughs> and now you see why I picked it. Got a, a whole group of guys in one area that are starting to close in on you. Nobody move. Nobody move. And for paralysis, combatant takes only one action during their next turn. Paralysis is removed at the end of that turn. The thing about the conditions in how, in how this works is, unless it specifies otherwise, conditions don't degrade, which is why things like poison and burning can be so nasty. They just sit there forever. Just sitting there, menacingly, taunting <laughs> me with their smug aura. It has. Are you, uh, are you sure? Are you talking about the poison? Or are you just talking about yourself in general, there, monk? That's a good question. The answer is yes. <laughs> All right. So you should be able to see and edit it, John. So the final thing for him, for him is going to be anchors and dead weights. Same rule applies. Where was that at again? Um, that's in Primer Part 2. So one thing I didn't actually look at. How many, how many points do I have? Five. Five? Okay. I think I think Let me just... Considering I'm an Elysian Legionnaire, I'm pretty sure I've probably had a pre pretty big connection with Sparkstone. Elite guards like that would probably have uh, some pretty, pretty big, close connections there. I'll mark that as an anchor. Mm -hmm. So that's so you've got three points left. And given that I'm a, uh, a blacksmith by trade, I'm pretty sure I, you know, I'm going to spend my other three points on a, uh, anchor for appraisal. All right. So, with Gungnir being a Elysian, Le Elysian legionnaire, um, are you going with the idea that he had passed away and was and was resurrected? I, I think that would make sense. Sense, sense, yeah. Mm -hmm. Brought brought back after a glorious death. For all intents and purposes, you're a nine hair yar. <laughs> no, no, God. But I mean the 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 appear the appearance gives the gives the vibe of. <laughs> Oh, you you went you went full Viking. I can I can see that. <laughs> oh. Hey, I only did what I was told. Mm -hmm. Oh. And what sort what sort of with the last one you went for a bit of a mystic who sees um the wor the world the physical and the spiritual world. What approach are you going with, Gungnir? The idea I have with Gungnir is that he was an honorable warrior who served the Legionnaire well, but much like any good warrior, especially one of his kind, he's always seeking that next adventure, the next, the next battle. Mm -hmm. 
and he knows just you know he, he's been stuck he's been stuck in guard duty here and there and he's getting sick of it he's like i want something better mm -hmm. all right that's that settles it for Gungir. so coops you are next on the list all right coming up ah, what what coops oh <laughs> Oh, it's about time. I All actually right. fell asleep there. <laughs> Oops. I feel that. All right, All right it's loading, right Monk. All right, I will keep. I will and keep an eye out. It's in. Going with the glasses, girl. I see. Oh, but of course. I All love me the sexy librarian type. All right, so let me. Oh, Never you. thought our resident waifu collector would collect himself. <laughs> <laughs> so, first off, what do we have for name? Uh, thanks to Shauna, I settled upon Titania Fortuna, or just Titania for short. Oh, I went with I, I pronounced it Titania. Sorry. As in the Queen of the Fairies. Uh, not what I was going for. I was more going for, like, uh, a mix of the planets from uh, Star Fox 64. Where do you think they got it? It's like... Nothing, nothing under, is new under the sun. Yeah. But when I was uh, trying to help Coop settle on a name, I gave him the idea of mixing the two of them because, as we learned with Neff running a invoker... One of his favorite uh, actions to use was uh, Fae Blast or Fae... Fae Kiss. Fae Kiss. Yeah, so, Fae Queen of Fortune. Yep. All right. Let me... It's currently uploading the... I'm currently uploading the art... So, Monk, I can put them into the drive later. Um, no, I ha I have to upload each into Roll Twenty on the Avatar slot. So even if you put them in the drive, that well, would no, just no, no, no. Be... I was going to give you just the bus sands the uh, emblem in the back because it's too high. Um, we will t we'll take care we'll take care of that later. Okay. So. We're going attribute. There isn't a subclass for invoker yet, so you have two options. You can either do the dice roll approach or the standard array approach for attributes. Which do you think you're going to go with? Uh, I'm going to go with standard. All right. Which of the three standard arrays are you, are you going to go with? All right, yeah. What page is that on again? No, no, no. He put them up in the he put them in the uh, cloister chat. Let me pin that. There you go. Hmm. All right, gents. I, I will gonna... be right back. Okay. No I think I'm gonna go with three, six, seven, and seven. All right. That's technically three seven 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 on my, on my end, but we'll de but we'll deal with that. Yeah. So, of the four of the four attributes, strength, intelligence, dexterity, and resilience, where are the sevens going? Uh, the sevens will be going to intelligence, resilience, and dexterity. All right, and the three is going. Yeah, three's going to strength. All right. So where where are you going to put your two free points? My two free points will be going to... Hmm, I'm going to put that to intelligence. So intelligence up to nine? Yep. All right. This does mean that... You have two points you can spend on increasing your special action limits. 
you know, okay. trigger, sustain, and amplify. So where are those going? Which one? Which one? Mm, I think I'm gonna maybe use amp. Use it on amplify. All right, that's one. Are you putting both in the amplify? Putting both on amplify. All right. That means your amplify limit is three. Okay. So let so let me put in the basics. So strength is three, which means your toughness is three. Intelligence is nine. So your resilience your sorry, not resilience, your resistance is six. Let's see for I'll hand, we'll handle we'll handle skills in a in a minute. So dexterity is seven. Your resilience is also seven. So your dodge and willpower are five. Uh, and your cap check critical is one. Accuracy is eleven. Penetration is six. Your Amplify is three, and your other special action limits are ones. You have two Tide Turner charges. Your HP so far is 21. Low so far. Yep. So, ski so for skills, are you going to go the Occupation route, or are you going to pick your skills manually? Uh, I'm gonna go with the occupation route. See how that works. All right. What um, what occupation are you gonna go with? Um, I was stuck between two occupations, but I think Mystic might actually work for my character. All right. What's the major skill for Mystic? Uh, the major skill is gonna be Insight. All right. Wait, you're going. You're going with libra You're going with librarian, aren't you? Like, a, that's your gimmick is is the librarian archetype. That's just how she looks. Uh, what I wanted to go for with her is kind of like a kind of like a necromancer, necromancer slash witch type of thing. Uh, all right. I just I just wanted to see the meth the method behind the madness. So oh, shit. okay. That means for your skills, um, athletics is six, endurance is ten, intimidate is six, insight is fifteen, knowledge is nine, mend is thirteen, acrobatics, stealth, and sleight of hand are all eights, focus is twelve. And fast talk and leadership are eights. All right. So then, then we get to your equipment. Uh... So what? So what are you going for your melee weapon? I'm gonna go with a two-handed staff. All right. And ranged weapon. Uh, wand. All right, and armor. Uh, ropes. All right, so that gives that means your resistance is at seven. And did you have a keepsake in mind? Uh, the only keepsake I can think of for her would probably be like a neck a necklace from her mentor alright all right.
and what sort of effect were you thinking of going with? Uh, I was thinking of an effect that would actually help out with accuracy. So... One of these special property ones is plus 2A until the end of the encounter, so I'm guessing that's what you're thinking? Yeah. All right. All right. And let's see. That is a fast action once per milestone. Okay. All right. So now we come. Now we come to the. Now we come to the um, crazy bits where we're going to be dealing with actions. Before that, what maneuver are you going to go with? Um, let's see. What page is that? Seventeen. Uh, oh wait, wait. Sixteen, sixteen, sixteen. I got it. Uh, I'm gonna go for. Hmm. Hmm. I'm going to go for Fade. Let's see what your stealth is. That's a bold strategy, given that your stealth is 8. Let's hope that works out. All right, so let me let me put that in. So fade is the stealth. That is a slow action. Make one stealth check. If you succeed, foes cannot target you until the start of your next what? turn. I'm sorry. Oh, Kay had that had this with her le with Kaede. <laughs> so. So two-handed staff target is range is one. Let's see, and damage is eight plus two versus resistance. Uh, during each encounter, plus one die to one spell. And Wand is targets one phone. Range is five. Does one D six plus three damage versus resistance. And now we get to the class actions, and remember, you have a to you have nine s you have nine slots to play with because Invoker does not have a subclass at this time. Okay, okay. Hmm. Let's see. Hey, I got majority slow actions here. Okay. Uh, for the first one, I think I'm gonna choose. Hex antagonize. Right. For the sec for the second. Uh make sure make sure to write those down. make sure to write those down in the chat. In the Discord oh. chat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh where's where's that? Okay. Uh dang, I need to minimize this. So hex antagonize, which is a sustained spell and let's see that is a slow action targets one foe range is it's a ranged five action let's see it does 2d6 piercing damage. Sustain, sustain effect 
plus one damage die, max f max five, to antagonize and repeat effect. Uh, though, given given the effects of your staff, that's actually three d six. That do that that does not affect the cap for sus for the sustain effect. Okay. All right, so that's that's one. Another one I was thinking of using is festering affliction. All right, so that's a general spell. It's a fast action. Target is one foe. Range is ranged five. And inflicts one stack of poison. And as an amp effect, you can expend one slow action to transfer all stacks of one condition you're suffering to your target. Yeah. So if you ever, if you ever get if you ever get bad breath, that's one way to turn it around. Though, fortunately, there are no Marlboros in this system. Yet. <laughs> well, for, that, you... for that, you have to play FF Legend. Mm -hmm. Although we've, even our version of Bad Breath isn't as dickish as it's been in some of the games. Yeah, it doesn't inflict all. It's just a random of, of the worst conditions in our game. That's all. Mm -hmm. And if you roll really badly, even more conditions. Yo, dog, we heard you like conditions with your conditions. All so right. you put more conditions in bad breath so that you yep. can breathe while you breathe. Yep. So what's what's um the third what's the third action you're going with? The next one, I think I'm uh, also add a bait to the thing. All right. So let's see, general spell, speed is slow. Let's see, targets one foe, range is five. Inflict tier plus two stacks of vulnerability. So in, the, in your case, that's vulnerability three. Yeah. And vulnerability just just does a penalty to barrier. So minus yeah. minus three, minus three toughness and resistance. That's nothing to sneeze at. Especially at tier one. Mm -hmm. So what's in slot four? I'm going to add distort reality. All right, distort reality. So that is a sustain spell. Let's see, speed is slow. Target is one foe. Range five. There's so many. There's so many fives in this. I'm, I'm wondering if Big E designed some parts of it. <laughs> yeah. So let's see. Thunderbirds are five. Plus two accuracy to actions that include your target. Sustain effect. Repeat effect. <laughs> so imagine. Give, imagine giving that. To, imagine um, <laughs> using that with whatever um, Gunier is targeting. He already don't miss as it is. Now you make him even more don't miss. Dude, Gunnier's gonna be on pack watch the whole entire session. <laughs> I think I'm gonna end up being point man. It's ve it's very clear that the war the way the warrior is designed there is a bit there is a bit of that tankiness, but it's more designed to be a ship, a close range shit wrecker. 
<laughs> That's not to say that you can't play defensive tank. It's it's just there's more kit for offense. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you got for slot five? I think I'm gonna actually add a trigger to my repertoire. Go for ineptitude. Ineptitude, that's a trigger spell. Your enemies will feel very triggered. See, Good! Okay. Target is one foe. Range, once again, is five. Our enemies feeling triggered must be a day that ends in Y. <laughs> <laughs> Who fooled me? So, condition, if a foe one or more heroes with an action or has that action cancelled John <laughs> <laughs> trigger effect that foe is knocked prone and, let, and as a reminder for prone for hero off guard and can't take action is removed prone by expending a fast action for foes off guard and they skip their first action hex of their chain to remove it and off guard for heroes you you lose two dodge for foes they and they trigger plus 2 a to cap checks against them <laughs> so let's see one two three four five okay what's number six healing do Sorry, I got I got thrown off. I thought you said healing doom. <laughs> it's a spell. It's a fast action. That's not good. Your target gains healing do local field effect once per round. One per round. Sorry to interrupt. I'll, I gotta reset my computer. I'm having something. I'm having an issue. No, no worries. And since that's a field range, you can put that square anywhere. Yep. So, so are we gonna sing the Healing Doom song? <laughs> no. So, Healing Doom. So, well, any square as long as it's unoccupied, obviously. Your target gains healing do local field effect once per round. Healing do effect. The next target that occupies the square heal heals tier plus five HP, then remove healing do local field effect. All right, so that's um, six. So you got three more because you don't have a subclass. Hmm. That Sprint seemed pretty good, so I'll take that. Which one? Transference. All right. So you transference. That's a general spell. Speed is slow. Target is field. So I have to, because of how Roll20 has it set up, I have to put in field twice. Oh. The battlefield gains the transference global field effect once per once per field. And oh boy, transference global field effect. If any combatant is healed above their max HP, you may remove transference to transfer the excess he excess healing to one hero, max five times tier. If any combatant takes damage that reduces their HP below zero. You may remove transference to transfer the excess damage as piercing damage to one foe, max five times tier. We love piercing damage in this household. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. So you All can either piercing damage. You can either um, you you have weaponized overheal, or you or you can weaponize enemies overkill. Woo. Remember everybody, there's no kill like overkill. Mm -hmm. Oh, we Bruce, learned that very quickly. Yep. So, 
Yeah, two more slots. So what's the next one? Two more slots. Two more slots. Give me well of power. It may be an inappropriate time to say this, but she has the power! <laughs> he has the power welling up inside him. Oh. There was I'd like I'd make a Shira joke, but I don't I don't want to get I don't want to get the stands of that. Oh, no what? No wait, fuck them. <laughs> <laughs> Better than Netflix Shira. Thanks. If I had a nickel for every time a reboot of a classic and beloved uh, franchise killed off the main character and replaced them with a female main character, I'd have two nickels, which isn't a lot, but it ha it's weird that it happened twice. Uh, you have more than two nickels at this point. Mm -hmm. I'm just uh, talking. I'm just talking. Shira and Scott Pilgrim. I take the joke where it is. Yep. Yeah, that's, that's, it's not a not, not a difficult uh, assessment though, Monk. It's uh, they they seem to they seem to like doing that. So <laughs> did they for... hear that right, Ayn? Yes, yes, it was. Yep. So, well of power, which you which you can apply to up to three squares on an encounter. Combatants occupying the square deal plus tier plus two damage on their first damage dealing action each round. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You've got one more um, slot left. One more slot left. Looks like I used up all the Clax actions available for this tier. Remember, Remember that you can use traits too. Mm -hmm. Oh, right, 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 right. <laughs> uh, let's use Earth Ties Damage. Wait, no, 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 no. Uh,. Base spinner. All right, that's just gonna give you plus one to sustain. Yep. All right, so so plus one sustain limit. So. You effectively have one, two, three for your special action limits. One trigger, one sustain, no, two sustain, and three amplify. So the last thing is anchors and dead weights. Once again, consult primer part two. Night turners. Oh, right. Dope. I was like, wait a minute, monk. There's a there's a step that's in between those two. <laughs> So, Tide Turner actions. Hmm. Yes. So remember, you got two slots. Right, right. Uh, I'm going to add Stupefy as one. All and... right. I will also add in Price of Pride. All right, Stupefy, that's a general spell. Speed is free. Target is one full. Range is, once again, ranged five. Reduce and, neg and negate all gains to resistance on your target to zero. Stupefy and its effect are, is removed at the end of the encounter. Um, that just negates any boost that they get to re to resistance, unless I'm re unless I'm misreading it. Let me check. It says reduce and, re and negate all gains to resistance on your target to zero. I'm trying to figure out if that just 
makes their resist makes their barrier zero or makes their resistance zero or something else. With an invoker stupefy. Mm-hmm. I think it just gets rid of gains. Yeah. From the, way it, from the way it reads, this is just, oh, if they have any additional resistance, it goes away, but their base resistance remains. Yeah, given that, I, th I think it might be better to go with Healing Font in instead. You think so? Because Stupefy might be a little bit too situational. Yeah, fair enough in the last. In the last uh, campaign, it wasn't really a use for it when uh, Nefnor was using it. I'm sure that there are. I'm sure that there are um, foes that do their boost their resistance, but that's again situational. Yeah. Right. And I so. and I don't know that it'll be happening in this particular module. And it's you know how it is about assuming. So yeah, instead, right. healing healing font. It's a it's a field spell that targets one one unoccupied field. Your target gains healing font, local field effect, one per encounter. The field effect combatants occupying the square heal for five HP at the start of your turn. And yeah. the other one you went with was hex price of pride. Correct. So. That is a sustain spell. Aren't you glad you picked Fro picked Fate Spinner? <laughs> yeah. See, that is a slow action. Target one unoccupied square. No, not one occupied square. One foe. Let's see, range is five. Auto hit in d inflict daze. Whenever your target misses at least one hero or has an action cancelled, deal three d8 piercing da damage. Sustain effect. Repeat effect. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put that as none because um, if you use this and the piercing damage applies um, in that kind of situation just roll it manually so now we have anchors and dead weights alright what page is that um, that's in primer part 2 okay close this out there There's so remember, f that. remember, you got five points. All right, just waiting for this to load. Mm -hmm. While you do that, I'm going to put that. In. So once once this is done, you should be able to see it on your sheet. All right, I got it open now. All right. Remember, five points of an of anchors and dead weights. You can't get more than three points from dead weights. Right. I think one anchor I would have is probably rift magic. All right. Let's see. All right. So that's an that's an anchor. So that's three points. You got two left. Another one would probably be. Uh, 
thinking better one would be Cloud Break. Yep. Okay, that's fi that's five total. So we oh, no. will t we will take we will take five, and when we come back when we come back, um, Jana, you're sorry, you're up next. <laughs> yep. Oh. Alrighty. All right, so, guys, we'll be back in a few. Mm -hmm. Roger.
and yeah, we, we are. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> y'all running each other over. Now we're being careful. Mm -hmm. Okay. So next up on the li next up on the list is going to be me. Oh, okay. Yep. Give me two seconds. I'll pop the art in the Discord. Give me two steps. I know it's three steps, but you know it should still fit. And scroll down. When you're ready, monk, I shall reveal. I, I think you posted that in our DMs. Oh JDK. shit! You are right. He'd already showed it to us in another DM, so I was like, why is this in my DM DMs now? Sorry, wrong chat. It's all good. I just figured you'd want to know. It's appreciated. And I believe you were going with um, the Atalanta. Mm-hmm. Very, very nice setup there. So, obviously, first things first, I need a name. Her name is Hippolyta. I get that reference. One second. We are, we already had somebody who was built like an Amazon le last time, so I guess now we're having an Amazon Amazon. <laughs> I mean, Hippolyta, yes. All right, and I believe you're going with and you're going with the Savior subclass. Yes, be I am. For later. Uh, so, for attributes, are you go are you? I'm taking a chance. All right, let's try our luck. Seven, five, six, seven. I'll take that. All right. Where is the where's the where's the first seven going? First seven is going in strength. Where is the five going? The five is going to go into dex. Wait, no, the five was the lowest, right? Yep. Yeah, you know what? I'll put that in dex. All right. Where is the six going? Intelligence. And the other seven. In oh. resilience. All right. So, you can increase one of your special action limits by one. Which are, which are you going to go with? Ah, shit. I got to look at the hero manual really quick. Hold on. Trigger sustainer or amp? Uh, actually, let me look at what I chose, and I will give you an answer. Hold on. There she is, Atalanta. Because I've already got my uh, list set up. Oh shit, I think I chose... Oh shit, I went with the wrong tier. I accidentally went to tier four. Um, oops, that nullifies like ninety-five percent of my list. Uh, let me go with amp. All right, so we're bo so we're boosting your amp limit. All right, and you do get you. Get a you can boost you can boost shift or move. Let's boost. Let's boost movement. All right. Shut the front door. So. 
So, let's see. All, all right. So next we go into skills. I'm going to go with the gladiator occupation. That's endurance, acrobatics, focus, and leadership. All right. So... Uh, your HP is at Fuck. is at twenty five. Okay. Let's see. Stre strength is seven. Your toughness so far is five. Let's see, eight in athletics, fourteen in endurance, eight in intimidate. Let's see, your intelligence is six. So resistance is also five, and no changes to um, intelligence skills. Dexterity is five, so your dodge is four, and acrobatics is eleven. Stealth is seven. Sleight of hand is seven. Then will so resilience is seven, so your willpower is five. Focus is 12, Fast Talk is 8, and Leadership is 12. You have a Critical of 2, an Accuracy of 10, and a Penetration of 7. Um, your Special Action Limits are Trigger 1, Sustain 1, and Amplify 2. So now we get to your Equipment. So what are you going with for a melee weapon? Uh, pole arm, two handed. All right, so you don't get an offhand. Ah, oh, shit. Uh, let me go one handed then. All right, light, medium, or he light, medium, heavy sh shield. What are you, what are you gonna go with for your um, medium shield? Offhand? All right, so that's giving you plus one to dodge and toughness. And your ranged weapon? Is crossbow. Alright. And your armor? Heavy. Alright, so toughness is seven. So let me put that. So one in pull arm. Crossbow seems to be a popular ma um, ranged weapon. It does better uh -huh. damage. It also has the longest range and it has p additional penetration. Mm -hmm. So, let's see, you're going with medium shield. I'd say medium shield would be like a kite shield. Would be medium size. That's about right. Um, heavy. When I when I think of a heavy shield, the first thing that came to mind would be something like say. Ah, so, shit. I was waiting for you to tell me. Neff just reminded me that my uh, image wasn't up yet. Whoops. Wouldn't be one of our streams if it wasn't a little scuff. <laughs> yeah. Like, like the fact that the uh, the episode uh, in Kick still says Skies of Axie Episode 1. Yeah. That's so weird, because up I updated the stream information on my end. That seems to be a kick problem. Yeah. Kick scuff is special. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're kicking them to the curb? No. Kicking them in the nuts, then? <laughs> uh. No. So... on from that so keeps so what sort so what did you have in mind for your keepsake my father's pole arm as far as a pole arm are you going with it it looks it looks like you're going for a st for a standard spear that's what I had on hand for reference yeah it's just pole um pole arm can be a lot of things 
I mean, how I remember, uh, keep in mind that with um, John's character last time, it was polearm, but it was technically a, a staff with a lotus flower on it. Yeah. No, it, it, it's it's going to be a polearm. Uh, it's going to be very intricate because my father also used to be a gladiator, but I was his only child. All right. So. In other words, I turned into Rebecca from One Piece. God damn it. <laughs> so, next. So, what effect are you going to go with for your keepsake? Plus action point this turn. All right. So. Let's see. Uh, we never that did my it, maneuver. Um, we'll get to that when we get to actions. Ah. So let's see. That is a free action. And it's once per combat. I can see the way you went with that instead of the plus two version. Hmm? Oh, there is a option of... There is a plus two... Action point option, but that's one per that's once per milestone. Yeah. All right. So now we get into the actions. So before we get before any of the fun stuff with actions, let's take care of the maneuver. Guide. Uh, let's see, where is it, where is it, where is it, where is it? There Guide, it is. Make is... a leadership check. If you succeed, one other hero gains advantage on his or her next roll. One stack. Which I think is there to make sure that you don't use that, um, you don't try and use guide twice on the same person. Yeah. So let's Smart call. Let's see, polearm, one foe, range is two, two D eight plus two, da plus two damage, uh, and crossbow, target is one foe, range is seven. The tired approach is sword and board. The wired approach is poke and board. <laughs> well, it's the it's the approach I would use I would use I would abuse in um, Pathfinder and a bunch and a bunch of games, Spe spear and shield, just so I could just so I could really abuse um, attacks of opportunity. Mm. Like you're not get you want to you. You have a, you have a five foot range for their melee attacks. You're not getting that close. Nope. Poke, poke. Stop poke, poking poke. me! Is it dead yet? Poke, poke, poke. All right, and now we get to class actions, and in your case, you get six from your six from Atalanta and three from Savior. Yep. Already got it all set. All right, so. We will handle the we'll handle the class actions from Atalanta first. Yep. All right. The first one is going to be Muse of War. Your first two war song actions are free in actions each encounter. All right. So your first one's a passive. I think I see Actually, where this I'm going is going to be. Change up okay. one of these. not doing damage so let me fix that all right what's in num what's in slot two uh united assault uh 
melee weapon damage, two times the number of other heroes within five squares of you. Amplication effect, expend one fast action to improve damage by plus five, times the number of other heroes within five squares instead. Uh, hold on a minute. You're on time limit. So... See, that's a general exploit. Speed is slow. And since it's melee weapon range, that's a range of two. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm actually going to have to put this as amplify because of the quirks of Roll 20's sheet. Mm. All right, what's in slot three? Slot three is going to be Sweeping Strike. Sweeping Strike, that is a general exploit. Speed is slow. Target is one foe. Range is melee plus one, so it's, so it's a range of three. See melee weapon damage and see. Aren't you glad that you boosted amp? Uh huh. Let's see melee weapon damage. Expend one fast action to cause hit foe to be knocked prone. And to follow that up, I'm gonna use uh, the next one on the list is finish them. Make your Mortal Kombat jokes. I know you got them. <laughs> We talked about that was the whole point of my character last time. So trigger sweet. condition: If a foe is knocked prone, triggered effect. One hero within five squares of you may may make one basic attempt against that foe as a free action. Application effect: Expend one fast action to add plus ten damage to their ba basic attack. Are you waiting on Richard to be prone? If I were to use that. With Gungnir in range, ho! Oh. You know how I, I've made I've made analogies to more ubiquitous classes within within um within 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 the game. Um, the Atalanta is the one that doesn't have a direct analog. The closest I could the closest I could say is bard, but I don't feel a hundred percent about that. Not necessarily a bard, but possibly a battle cleric. Well, not necessarily a cleric either. Of mm. like I said, the, even although even with the other ones, um. Unless they're unless they're named a more familiar name, it's hard it's hard to make a one to one analogy. Like rem like um, remember the back and forth that happened with the spiritualist yes. last time. Yes. Oh yes. So okay, that's one, two, three, four. What's in slot five? It's War song, dirge of weakness. Auto hit. Inflict one stack of weakness on each of your targets, two per round. Let's see, exploit. That is a fast action. But and if I use Muse of, of War. Well, Muse of War is a passive. That's always active. Yep. Or, well, with Muse of War being passive, it it would be a free action. Mm hmm. Hehe. <laughs> so. All fo all foes, all all foes within five range. If this was a fi if this was a field range, that'd be 
a little bit ridiculous. Yeah. Redonkulous. <laughs> so. And uh, for the last action is going to be Sunspear. Melee weapon damage. Expend one fast action to heal all he other heroes. Tier plus one HP. All right. All right. So let's see. General exploit. Say slow. Let's see, target is one foe. Melee weapon range. Just out of curiosity, would you have picked a pole arm if if the if it weren't? For, I guess it, I guess what I'm saying is, did the class art for the Atalanta play a factor in picking a pole arm, or would you have gone with that regardless? I would have gone with that regardless because it can be both melee and ranged. So let's see. Sun spear. Weapon damage. You have to put that as amplify on the roll 20 sheet. And. Since it, do since it doesn't say um, a, gi a given range, I'm assuming all other heroes, period. I'm going to assume as such, yes. Is that one of your subclass abilities? Uh, no, no, that is one of my regular tier one abilities. Okay, let me... Let me check. On the Atalanta. I can do a triple check. That sure is... Or... Oh, wait, hold on. Uh, no, it just says melee weapon range. Sunspear? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But that's I'm Mele going that's to... The, that's for the initial target, the one foe. Yeah. yeah. Amp effect, expend one fast action to heal all other heroes, tier plus one HP. Yeah. It, there's no range to the amp effect. Mm -hmm. So now we get to the sa the actions for Savior. Yes. And when you're ready, I have that set up. Uh, the first will be uh, Shield Mastery, plus two toughness, plus one resistance, and plus one willpower while you wield a shield in the offhand equipment slot. Mm -hmm. So. I don't think anyone's going to say no to more defense. Nope. So. Plus one resistance. So your toughness is nine. <laughs> See, willpower is six. That'll be good. That'll be good against casters. And I don't. I don't foresee you dropping the shield anytime soon. Nope. Definitely don't drop the shield in the shower. <laughs> well, we All can right. guarantee this. He's not going to pull a mic. <laughs> No. And we I will never let him live that down. Everybody thinks I was petty for the fact that I keep that I've been holding on to that for, for the for over five years now. I still give him shit for Pizza the Hut, so mm -hmm. So what's slot two from Savior gonna be? Uh sh actually hold on, let me double check with something. Now Oh crap! Never mind. I just realized the uh, shield bearers thing that I was gonna go with for sheltering strike refers to shield maiden. So I'm gonna take that off. Uh, let's see. Um, crap. Uh, let's do pensive pavice. I believe I pronounced that correctly. 
Uh, trigger, trigger condition if your target makes a basic attack. Trigger effect, minus 4 accuracy to a cap check. Tier times 3 piercing damage and cancel that action, 1 per round. Unfortunately, it's it it is melee one. It is melee one. So it would have to be the foe directly in front of me. Well, the foe directly adjacent to you. Mm -hmm. And third on the list will be sweeping strike. Oh wait a minute! I already have that. Mm hmm. Oh shit! Ah crap! Um. Problem is, is that a lot of these other ones need the shield maiden thing to work. So, so what do you, what do you have from the class so far? I have shield mastery and uh, pensive pavice. Pensive pavice. Or pavice. Yeah. Thank you. Um. And I already have sweeping strike because that's a duplicate from my uh regular t tier one of uh, list okay so stand your ground is self or shield maiden you don't have to have a shield maiden for it mm -hmm. <clears throat> trigger condition if you or a shield bearer yeah but you or or means that you, you can do either target mm -hmm. that's fair um there's also um sheltering there's also sh there's also um sheltering strike. Yeah, I was looking at that one. Yeah, we'll go with that one. Which one? Sheltering strike or stand your ground? Uh sheltering strike. Here times 5 piercing damage. If you hit plus one and plus one resistance to you, plus one toughness and resistance to you, and all shield bearers until the start of your next turn. Mm -hmm. Can work. Yep. So, let's see. General exploit. Say slow action. Targets. I mean, it does. It's not doing a. It's not going to do a whole lot of damage, but it is still piercing. Yep. And as we know, that's where the uh, money is, if you will. Mm -hmm. What I see with the savior, they use their shield as a mobile cover for other people. Which is what I was thinking maybe. of. Hmm. Uh. Because, like, if you get Shield Maiden and then you get Seraphic Sanctuary... Yeah, I was looking at that. It turns your little mobile shield into cover for other people. In other words, this is, this is, kind, this is essentially what, what um, Mike, was tr Mike was trying to make all, all those years ago, but kind, but kind of botched. Partially on him and partially based due to the system we were working with. Hmm. So, you do have two slots for Tide Turners. Yep, and I've got those ready as well. Right. Uh, and rem remember that they can be... You can have them from either Atalanta or Savior. Yep, I'm, I've chosen one from each. All right. So, which one for Atalanta? We'll do that first. Uh, it's going to be War Song, Lion Song. Range 5, plus 5 damage to the next damage dealing action used by each of your targets. Amplication effect, expen expend additional fast actions to improve damage by an additional plus 5 for uh, each additional fast action. Note each fast action expended counts towards devoted act. But, wait, do I have to have that to use this or? No. No. Devoted act is a is a passive that just makes your first two amp effects free actions. Gotcha. That's a Which case can... of if... go ahead. 
which is funny if you took to both devoted act and muse of war and then immediately used war song lion song uh yeah it would have been war. Free, it would have been a free reaction mhm mm mhm mm it'd be free and then the two fast actions you you use for amplifying would be free and then you could use other more even more amplifies on top of it <laughs> yep yeah. but that's only if you're building to be a very specific damage support And, uh, hang, from, oh. hang on. I'm still putting in, um, Lion Song. Maybe I'm a lion. God damn it. <laughs> we haven't even gotten to my character yet. Oh, 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 geez, huh? uh, although, using an effect and being able to apply additional fast actions to boost it. I am getting the strangest case of Dijon mustard right now. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. you had a similar gimmick last time. Yup. Like the, the more things change, the more they stay the same. So what's the Tide Turner from Savior? Steelhearts. Uh, range 5, select one condition, remove all stacks, and negate future stacks of that condition from your targets until the end of the encounter. Mm -hmm. Although I'm looking at this... I might actually change that out. No, I have to because I don't. Mm. You know what? We'll go. Uh, we'll switch out Steel Hearts for Retribution. Never mind. Um, there will be no mentioning of a certain stable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> So, All right, one. so Retribution uh, it is uh, either one hero or one shield bearer, range 5. If your target is included as a target of a foe's action, that foe takes uh, three times tier piercing damage. If your target is a shield bearer, that foe takes five times tier piercing instead. Sustained effect, repeat. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, Zan, she's going Royal Guard. I saw that. <laughs> Royal Guard! Uh, real quick, I'm going to have to step out because it is a So, I'm not going to put in the Shield Bearer part because that's not going to be relevant for this case. But three, t but three times to your piercing damage, that's going to be very nice. Uh, real quick, uh, I'm going to go ahead and step out because it is almost time. Yep, I I see the I see the writing on the wall. So I, so I will ca I will catch you in there. So stay frosty, man. Later, everybody. Right. Um. So the final thing we have for you for you, Kay, is the anchors and dead weights. Mm -hmm. Uh, anchors are going to be animal handling, tooth and claw armor, and field magic. Let's see tooth, tooth and claw. Let's see where it is. Ah. And what was the third one? Field magic. At least I'm pretty sure I read the uh, description on that one. Field right. medicine. Yes, thank you. Wow. Field medicine, yes. You were looking yes. at rift magic above it and confusing the two. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, that's it. I'm having a day. Don't mind me. Yep. So, are there any dead weights or is that it? I do have one dead weight and it is the uh, Rift Keepers Guild. <laughs> wow, I'm real. I'm really getting deja vu. No, my uh, dead weight last time was the uh, chasers. You're still on bad terms with somebody who's <laughs> with a group that's that it that may become a villain. <laughs> so, I am technically correct. The best kind of correct. Oh come on, you have to say it with the accent. 
You are technically correct. The best kind of correct. So, the now for the final piece of the puzzle, and that is to take care of the imp of the image. So, God damn it, Ein! What? What's up? What did he do? What did I do this time? Ra ra Rasputin, lover of the <laughs> Russian. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, that's a good song, though. Yeah, it is, look at the, look it at is the so fucking catchy. Hey, look at the picture in council. Hmm. <laughs> and they were posting, they were posting puns, so I posted one of my favorites. Oh fuck. <laughs> that was that was what Monk was was saying. God damn it about. <laughs> I have to ask, like, hey, have you seen the uh, Rasputin music video they did with... I have not. There's one they did with the FMA cast, so they turned Alex Armstrong into basically the Rasputin they were talking about. All right, who's next on the list? Neff? Yep. I will find that video so you can watch it later. Uh, appreciate that. Thank you. And... Okay, you should see your character in the journal. I do. No, no, I gotta I do, do that right. Declare. I do, I do, I do. Oh. <laughs> what? You bring me in, Monk, and all of a sudden my chaos infects everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just haven't trolled his ass in a hot minute. There you go, Lady K. Check your DMs. I uh, see that. Thank you much, sir. So, I technically already saw a, a, a early version of this. No, but... she hasn't changed. Well, yeah, unless but... you checked my, uh, unless you checked uh, that page like a few weeks ago. Which I didn't. Oh, no, then you haven't seen her updated version then yet. Yay! Right. So, I'm re Posting um, ready. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but there is another trend for this, uh, for this party. Which trend is that? A little over half the team is redheads. Well, if Hollywood is going to keep um, removing redheads, then I guess it's our duty to put them back. Damn right. Damn right. I mean, <laughs> amen. Hollywood removes redheads for no reason either. Well, like we, we know we what need... the reason is, but we don't want to talk about it. All right. Can I uh, put her up on the uh, stream, Monk? Yep. All right, oh. Neff. You're up. I would true. like to introduce Lady Zanvir Darius III, Keeper of the Sacred Flame. <laughs> you, are ty you are typing that out in the chat right now. <laughs> okay, the Waxana Troy. Already done. <laughs> Neff, my response to you. Okay, the Waxana Troy. No, no, and I didn't go full Luoxana because, my God, her title is long. It is, but I just had to say that and, and make that uh, that reference because that's what it reminded me of. Do I need to bring up Setra the Imperishable's titles again? Setra isn't something that you can count, Monk. Come on. <laughs> Remember, it takes two hours to read off all his titles. Yes. Yes, it does. We're not going to talk about him. So, you are going with Arden because you want because you. Want he wants to make shit go fire. boom. And you're going with Firebrand. Yes, fire, 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 fire. So, see, so we're going with at, we're going with attribute. Are you going to be doing the standard array, or are you going to try your luck? I am not pressing my luck, so we are going standard array three seven seven uh, in that order. And with the bonuses going into int and res. So. Three, eight, seven, eight. In the end. 
Yeah. Before I even get to that, which um, numbers are... So is it strength three then? Yeah. Three strength, uh, and then with the bonus, eight int, seven dex, eight res. Eight res. Now, uh, this is what uh, Neff meant by we would have two Xans now. <laughs> Xan and Zan. I see. So you've got two points to spend on that on special action limits. Trigger and amplify. All right. And one point to spend on on shift or move. Shift. All right. And for skills, are you going to go manual or occupation? Well, technically it's occupation, but I am switching two of the ones in it. Uh, occupation is going to be noble, and I am swapping it so the major is intimidate, and the minors are leadership, knowledge, and fast talk. Alright, so... I, da, 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 da. I apologize if you guys hear John talking in the background. Right. Feel free to smack and we all can use some more comedy. Okay, so you're not if he doesn't deserve it. Your toughness is three. Your athletics is six. Your endurance is six. Your intimidate is twelve. Let's see, intelligence is eight. So your resistance is six. Insight is nine. Knowledge is 13. Mend is 9. Your dexterity is 7. Your dodge is 5. Your acrobatics, stealth, and sleight of hand are all 8s. Your resilience is 8, so your willpower is 6. Your focus is 9, and fast talk and leadership is 13. See, Neff playing a character with a high with a high amount of fast talk. Oh, hey, I'm hey, surprised. Seen... Oh, hey, Jesus. I've seen this movie before. Let's see, your critical is one, your accuracy is eleven, your penetration is six, your trigger is two, your sustain is one, your amplify is two. So now we go into inventory. What are you going for, melee weapon? Staff. All right. So you're not getting an offhand item. I am. Ranged weapon. Wand. All right. Um, armor set. Robes. All right. So that's a resistance of seven. And what did you have in mind for your keepsake? The Sacred Flame Pendant, a heirloom signifying the family, which has next action gains piercing. All right. Which series is that one in? Special nope. property. Yep. is a free action once per combat. Hey, Rocky Romero. So oh, yeah. just ma make sure not make sure not to waste it. <laughs> oh, I know. So let me so staff wand rope. I kind of wish there was a heavy robes option. Maybe I'll, maybe, maybe I'll put that in. Maybe I'll put that in down the road. So now we get to the fun stuff with actions. But for, 
Um, first things first, what do you have in mind? What are you picking for your maneuver? Daunt. When you make a move action, make one intimidate check. If you succeed, you can move through any combatant with that action. Makes sense. She's a noble. People get out of her way. Oh, God. Oh, God. Okay, I just came to a terrifying realization. What's that? Oh, no. It's the reincur- It's instead of Lord Fussy Butt, it's Lady Fussy Butt. <laughs> well, K's gone by. <laughs> K's gone by by you got what you got. <laughs> instead of Lord Fussy Butt, we now have Lady Fussy Butt. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> yes, it is. This goes right over my head. So. Okay, okay, okay. Um, previous campaign. Yes, previous this... campaign. I believe that was our Warhammer uh, campaign. I don't. Yep. I don't... Yeah, I think it was that was our war, that was our Warhammer yeah. campaign, and John played a pistolier by the name of Lord Aristeo von Brenner. Well, my character, being the snarky ass bitch she was, dubbed him Fussy Butt. Fussy Butt was my daughter's nickname after she was born. So I was calling him a big ass baby. By the way, Maddie approves. <laughs> <laughs> and Matt, it got the Maddie J seal of approval. <laughs> Okay, so next is going to is going to be the fun stuff when it comes to class actions. So remember, oh shit, I forgot to put those in the chat for you. I am so sorry, Monk. No worries, I already got them on the sheet. I think part of it was because I was trying to edit as I was going because I had chosen the wrong tier. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Let's see. All right, you ready? Give me one second while I while I put I put the all players in, and so everybody can see everyone's characters, but only e only each um only each person can edit them. <laughs> and in you in your case, yes, I I am putting that full fucking title in there. <laughs> she deserves it. Don't, uh... Don't get too far ahead of yourself there, Monk. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and it's cut off on my end. Oh my god. It's cut... It's gonna be cut off on everybody's end. Unless just just for out. you guys to see really quick, I'm gonna pop the, uh... play screen <laughs> back up. Let's, Let's see. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Uh... <sighs> There it is. Question: So, are we? Am I allowed to start calling uh, Neff's character Lady Flamebrain? Depends. How many uh, degrees of burns do you want? <laughs> I don't know. How many? How many of your? How many kill steals will I be getting away with? <laughs> Not many. Remember, burning stacks do one d twenty. Yeah, but you can only have two burning stacks on any target. Mm -hmm. Not with some of my abilities. All right, since we're going with ardent, so what's slot? What's going to be in slot one? Ground zero minus two. And uh, my next spell, inflict one stack of burning on all foes hit by my next spell. All right. So, general exploit. <sighs> I needed that laugh. Fast. Thank you. Mm hmm. So, my. So, minus. So, you cut, you cut down a bit of range, but you get to, inf but you get to inflict burning when, the when you hit. Exactly. 
Down, boy, down. All right. So what's in slot two? Well, let's couple that one with Raging Inferno. It's one to three foes and does 2d8 damage. Burn, baby, burn. Raging Inferno. Mm -hmm. At ground zero. Uh, Raging Inferno, still more over than Disco Inferno. Well, that goes without saying. We will never not take a pot shot at that bastard. Heck, I'm, I got only one. Here, I got something. A brand, a newbie cosplayer, someone just getting into the art of cosplay, is more over than Disco Inferno. Mm -hmm. So, and that's versus resistance. Instead, it is. So let me make sh let me put that in for the description. There we go. All right, what's in slot three? Cauterize. Remove all stacks of one non-burning condition from your target, then inflict one stack of burning, with an amp effect of remove all stacks of two conditions, and then inflict burning. So e even if they don't have a condition, that's still more burning. Burning, burning, and more burning. It's like the old... I heard you like fire, so I put some fire on your fire so you can burn while you burn. Burn, baby, burn. They don't need no water. Let the motherfuckers burn. Mm -hmm. No, you try. No, basically. Oh my God, they're on fire! I'm gonna try to put it out with more fire. That didn't work. Let me try that again. Well, no, no, it has to be a non-burning condition for that one. So, although like since it's it, it, since it states um, one combatant, it can I, use, use, I could use that on. I could use that on uh, heroes too. Mm -hmm. Well, and that that works because in some later tiers there are things where you can remove burning from combatants to heal them. Exactly, so it has some very useful ability. Oh, trust me, I remember. Mm -hmm. I remember re reviewing the Ardent. Yeah, the Ardent was it's well, it's the first class that you see that you see, and it def it definitely gives an idea of what you're dealing with, because. I know I know some people would say that the Ardent is akin to a sorcerer. I don't see it that way. Yeah, it, it's um specifically the trait quench the flames at tier three. Mm -hmm. Alright, time... so what do we have for slot four? Mana echoes. Auto hit, one D eight damage, uh, versus resistance. Only get to cast that once per round, so no Daka. Mm-hmm. Oh, no magic Daka. Technically speaking, I shouldn't have been able to cast it last time. There was a, a difference between the printed version and the PDF version, and since I had printed, I didn't realize the difference. Yeah, technically I shouldn't have allowed that, but count, but counterpoint, rule zero. That's correct. Also, well, zero is the only rule that you have to obey at the end of the day. Well, that and the corollary to rule zero, which is don't be a dick. Fair. So. Even the person who coined that rule uh, broke it. Which person? Will Wheaton. I don't think he uh, coined that one. Well, he no. certainly made it well known. Yeah. He pioneered it, sure. A and then he broke it. I mean... That's not hard. It's Will fucking Wheaton. Mm -hmm. There's a reason why Shut Up Wesley is a meme. Yeah, that's what got me banned from him. Really? Oh, yeah, that's he, funny. he banned me on Twitter when I sent it to him one time. If you bring that up to if you bring that up to him at all, no matter who you are, he will block it. Unless it's in person at a at a con. 
because he can't have you escorted off the uh, the premises for shouting a meme. Mm -hmm. Can, however, ignore you. But if I ever meet him, I want I want to have him a D twenty that's full that's just ones all the way down. Since he's a failure. Womp womp. Like here, you deserve this. Mm -hmm. So let's see one two. That way you know you're always a failure. All right, what is in slot five? Hearth's glow, amp effect. When you hit one or more foes with a spell, somebody gets healed on our side for four hit points. Well, tier plus three HP. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, I'm just looking at what it says here in the system, but yeah, exactly. All right, so amplify spell that is a fast action. Target is one spell. Range. Ooh. The range is there is no range. All right. So that is one, two, three. Okay. What is the final slot from Ardent? Spark amplify exploit. Uh, when you hit with one, uh, hit one or more foes with a spell plus uh, tier plus one. Uh, tier plus one plus one. Uh, tier plus one plus one damage to that spell. <laughs> Dude, don't you? I'll, I'll, I'll read it from the book. When you hit one or more foes with a spell plus tier plus two damage to that spell. Mm -hmm. As a free action. Yeah, it's weird. It it's just trying to say, you you add tier and two, and then you add that much damage to that spell. It it could use a little bit more syntactical clarity. Mm -hmm. It's a, it it is a f it is a free action, but. But once again, remember you do have the action. You do have the um, ample so, the amp limit of two. Yep, the special action. That's why limit. I increased it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we get to the savior. No, the firebrand. Yeah. What? Sorry, I thought I I thought I had fi I thought I had fixed that tab. Let me put that back in. Okay, Firebrand. I, I think we need some comforting warmth, which at the start of a round, all heroes heal two plus tier hit points if one or more burning foes is adjacent to them. Yep, so <laughs> let's see. Give a man a fire and he'll be warm for a day. Set a man but, on fire and he'll be warm for the rest of his life. And he will also heal my party. So, let's... Oh, I see where this is going. Aggr aggressive support. So, what's slot two from Firebrand? Contact burn. Tier plus one D8 damage versus resistance. If target is adjacent, they also get a stack of burning. Got range seven. That's why it says if target is adjacent. Mm -hmm. I get. I get the feeling you're. I get the feeling you're trying to go for the magic shotgun route of a close range caster. No, that's more of a. If you get close to me, you don't want to be. Mm -hmm. All right, gentlemen. Thank you for having me along. I'm going to go help some family with some stuff. All, all right. Thanks. See thanks for later. stopping in. I'll. I will see you next week. I. Yes. Have a fun one. All right. Let's see, range is range seven, and that is going to be doing two D eight plus versus resistance. If your target is adjacent to you, inflict one stack of burn. 
of burning to your target. Okay, and what's the third um, slot? Strike the match. Whenever your target is hit with two or more actions in a single turn, inflict one stack of burning on that foe. Note, burning is applied after the second action's effect resolves. Sustained effect, repeat effect. Fire? I don't know where. Which would be great fun, though. I could uh, cast that on somebody distant away that's getting hit by somebody else, and suddenly they get turned into a torch. And if they're hitting them in person up close, hey, they're also healing, my friends. Though I, I can't help but notice that your range... When it comes to your ranged effects, you have the highest um, range for them. So... Seven. Yeah, except for Raging Inferno, which has the range of three. Everything else is range seven. Although that's balanced out by the fact that Raging Inferno is a um, multi-target. Yeah, exactly. See, repeat effect and make sure it doesn't obviously Fire. obviously when it comes to the damage for um burning you're gonna have to roll that manually oh that's the best part uh, you, unfortunately you only have 21 hp yeah, I saw that. It's a little low, but, you know, that's okay. If anything lives to get close. All right, so next is Tide Turners. Well, technically, one of them is in both Firebrand and Ardent, and the other one's going to be Firebrand, so we'll just say we're both Firebrand. Uh, Composite Magic. Next two spells are free actions. So that's a general exploit, which is a slow action. Target is self. Next two spells are free actions. And I can see you you I can see you um using that. That's going to be interest that's gonna result in some interesting combinations given how um given how Augustus can weaponize the action economy. Oh, it's going to be ugly. So what's your what's gonna be your second tide turner? Scintillating flames in stack inflict two stacks of burning on your target. If your target is adjacent, max stacks of burning on hit foe is increased by plus three. <laughs> like I said, more fire. Yep. And if you wanted to burn through your tide turners, just composite magic and scintillating flames. And then throw on some other things on there to get the stacks up as high as possible. Mm. And watch everything turn to ash. Well, it's only on one target, so well, it'll be a good it'll be a good way to say fuck you to elite tiers. Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, and fuck you. You are cool. I'm a fuck you especially. So let's see that. Let's see, scintillating flames is a slow. Fuck you! Fuck you! Fuck you! Fuck you! I'm seeing your mom tonight. Fuck you. <laughs> Which that means the maximum amount of burning you could inflict is five. If there's a lot of burning. Yeah, cause keep, that's five d twenty. That's so... a lot of death. Anything, a theor any theoretical maximum of a hundred.
which means that anything that anything that is not anything that is not that is not gr that is a grunt is not going to last so that takes care of takes care of that so what do you have in mind for anchors and keepsakes well, I've actually got a little bit of a story for it, because this character is obviously a noble. Her family was known in the past as they were affiliated with the Scions. They are, of course, now distancing themselves from it, but the Rift Keepers don't particularly like them, which is why Rift Keepers will be a deadweight. They do have uh, close ties with the College of Inventors, which replaced the Scions, so... That's an anchor. And since they are fairly well known in the uh, city, Sparkstone is an anchor. And since uh, they have good ties with being able to get things for people for various events, haggling as an anchor. You can never go wrong with a good haggling. But I, I, get, the f I get the feeling that... Lady Xanthia is is anything but humble about the family business. Well, in terms of uh, their old affiliations, she doesn't outwardly support the Scions, but privately they have no problems with them. But as far as the Rift Keepers, that they don't like that uh, they don't like her family, and it's pretty well known and they don't like him back so there's been a few cases of of um of rip of riff keeper laboratories ha catching a bad case of explosions i don't uh, know what you're talking about that has <laughs> nothing to do with us that's purely by accident no like here's a no all i have to say is you know that jo that the jokes we were saying earlier with the fuck you earlier in the stream that applies here now So of that course, takes... they don't join the College of Inventors because of their past affiliations, but they are definitely friendly. Yep. So, Rick, you are up next. Yay! And I believe, Rick, you picked... You're picking a rogue and going with Nightshade as your subclass, so let me set that up. <laughs> Um, and Zan, I'm just going to tell you right now, given the info you just did, I'm, that's actually going to help with some of the anchors I chose, so I might be playing a part in some of yours. You mean Neff? I mean Neff. Sorry. Yeah, I was about to say, which Zan? <laughs> <laughs> the one that, the one that doesn't appear on Monk stuff majority of the time. Sorry, I worked uh, 50 hours this week, so... Uh. So... I do, I do like that it looks like he... It looks like um, he's hanging off of his own of his own symbol. <laughs> oh, and for reference, the name of Xanthia actually came from a WoW character that I had, who was a fire mage. Very nice. Hmm. So... I'm just um so let me know let me know when you're ready when you're ready to put it up okay assuming she's not muted I just realized I was muted son of a bitch thank you <laughs> boy did I call that one yes you did all right and Treffa is going up <laughs> There's my little sneaker. Yes, this is Truffa. At least that's what they know him as. All right. Um, could you type that? Could you type that out for me? 
Uh huh. So is he more of a Reebok or is he a Nike uh, sh sneaker? <laughs> I, that's that was bad, and you should feel bad. Never. <laughs> All right, all right. So you, he is. Go it looks like you're going for the sneaky boy. Why am I get? Why am I getting vibes that he's gonna be not far removed from, um, Garrett from Thief? I don't know. Hey, monk, thieves guild. <laughs> what? You. I suffered through it too. I just had to remind you of our suffering. Eh, well, he could have passed for Brynjolf. Him... <laughs> oh, so, is he more? Is he more of the? Tr is he more of the traditional thief, or is he more of a um, assassin? Uh, the way I was doing it, I would say more uh, partially a, a mixture of both. I because occupation wise. I have him down as spy. So although the the although if we're gonna go with spy, I should I should say which what kind of spy because remember there's a spectrum. On one yes. end you've got you've got Jason you've got Jason Bourne. On the other end you've got James Bond. Yeah, I would uh, say I would say more intelligence gathering. And Again. on the third end you have Tasogare. <laughs> well, what about Jack Reacher? Reacher's not a spy. I would say more, at the end of the day, more of a thief spy. I would, something along the lines of, he usually gets, he usually spies and gets information, but he's also willing to, to pilfer to get that info. Fair, a fair point. So... For for when it comes to your attributes, are you going to try your luck with the dice or go with a standard array? Yeah, standard or standard or what array? Let's go right. five sixty five and the and the devil's number. All right, what's getting five and what's getting the sixes? Uh, definite six will go to dexterity. And intelligence. Let's do strength gets the five and six for everything else. All right. So where where are you going to put your two freebies? Uh. I'm going to put one on strength, and then the other one is going to dexterity. All right. Um, for move for your movement bonus based on dexterity, is that going to um, shift or move? Move. All right. So for skills, are you going to go with occupation or pick manually? I'm occupationing. All right. Which one are you going with? Spy. What's the major skill for that one? Major skill is stealth, and then the four, mi the three minors are fast talk, insight, and sleight of hand. All right. Let's see. Your HP is twenty-four. Okay. Which means you are the second highest so far. It's better than where it was before, where I was what the second lowest. Mm -hmm. So far, there's not real. There's nobody with the goose egg award because the lowest is all twenty ones. That's true. Uh, oh. So, let's see, strength is six. So your toughness is five. Athle um, athletics, endurance, and intimidate are all eights. 
Intelligence is six, so your resistance is five. Insight is 12. The rest of your intelligence skills are eight. Dexterity is seven. So your dodge is five. And acrobatics is eight. Stealth is 14. Sleight of hand is 12. Will for resilience, that is six. Willpower is five. Focus is eight. Fast talk is 12. And leadership is eight. Your critical is two. Your accuracy is 11. Your penetration is seven. And as all, you have two tied turns. And I, ju I just realized there's one thing I, f I forgot to bring up when doing attributes. Um, which of the special action limits are you going to boost? Special action limits? Trigger, mm -hmm. amp, or, or, or uh, sustain. <clears throat> amp or sustain. Give me a sec, I have to. I'm scrolling. And for the record, guys, uh, the reason I have my mic muted is because uh, John's right behind me, <laughs> as you well know. Mm -hmm. Yep. And he's uh, in another call, so I don't want that bleeding over. No worries. Okay, what, what were the th three attributes? You can increase your trigger limit, your sustain limit, or your amp limit by one. What's amp again? It, 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 de it depends it depends on a uh, what class actions you're going to use but it's a class action or class trait that it modifies other abilities amp effects do not do anything on their own but when you use them they usually modify other abilities mm. okay you want to look at your class and see which ones they're going to use most often yeah i'm just trying i'm literally trying to find the Oh, it says it, it on the class actions. I know, that's not what I was looking at. Uh, I'll just do the... I'll do... Sustain. Alright, so Sustain goes up by one. <laughs> so now we get to Inventory. Yes, we do. So what are you going for Melee Weapon? Let me pull up my sh the she I made. We're going with the one-handed sword, and the offhand, and the free hand is going to be offhand. So offhand weapon. Yep. All right. So one-handed sword and. Uh, do we get a man weapon. question? Do we get a maneuver? Um, we're dealing with maneuvers when we get to class actions. Fair enough. All right, what are you going for ranged weapon? Throwing knives. All right, and armor? Uh, let's go with some light armor. All right, so that means plus one to dodge. And what did you have in mind for your keepsake? Keepsake? is going to be uh the cloak i have all right and what if what effect did you have in mind for the uh, keepsake ignore one field effect from each combat all right which se which series is that in uh let me get to it I went nope, to class. never mind found it Yep, I was... Uh, yeah, Conditions and Field Series. Alright, so ignore one field effect from each combat. Usable in, co usable in combat as a free action. Mm-hmm. And since it just, since it just says... And it doesn't have it doesn't have a usage limit. Mm-hmm. 
So, na so now comes the fun now comes the fun part. Let's see, actions. So, first off, what do you what maneuver are you going with? Analyze. Right, and that's insight. Is a fast action. Make one insight check. If you succeed, plus three penetration to your next action. One stack, and then we have sword. Plus two, and of course your first, basically. Your first basic ranged attack each round is, is a fast action. Now we get now we get to class actions and keep in mind it's six from rogue and three from nightshade. Yep, I already have them all pulled out. So, so let me get this up in there. So we're looking at. I'm apparently typing it up for you. All right, then. Oh. Uh, Even will... if you type up the whole thing, I'm getting I'm getting you to know one by one because I can't have all three things up at once. Fair enough. I only have two screens, not three. So what I'm so the first one is mobility. All right. See so mobility. That is a passive. Plus two squares to move actions. Which means your move is seven. <laughs> All right. What's the next one? Pinpoint strike. All right, pinpoint strike. It's a general exploit. Speed is slow. Targets one foe. Range is melee weapon, which is going to be one for you. Mm-hmm. So, plus 3C to cap check, melee we weapon damage, plus 1 damage die, if amplified with dual attack, deal t um, 2 t deal, um, double, deal two times damage instead. Mm -hmm. So, let's... So, actually, I'm going to put this as a, cu as a custom... So instead, it's doing um, th it's doing three d three d six plus two, and I can. S I didn't mean for that one. Your critical is f is five. <laughs> um, are you go are you going to be taking dual attack or? <laughs> 
Dual attack is or is was on my list already. All right. So is that one you, that is that the one you want me to put in next? Yeah. All right. Dual attack. That is a amplify exploit. Speed hey. is. Hey Rick, in the, in the list that I'm seeing in Discord, you've only got six class actions. Those are my regular class actions. I have a subclass. I I'm typing up my subclass actions right now. Okay. Yeah. It's just I realized okay, I I doubled up on one, so I'm going to, I'm changing it. Okay. Well, I was just you got tide turners written here, and I'm wondering if you're going to want any of the tide turners from your uh from your subclass. Mm -hmm. uh, that was just how those were just how I typed up in my sheet. Okay. Uh, All right. All right, so that's three. So what's number four? Uh, tactical retreat. Tactical retreat. Ah, there it is. Let's see. That is a trigger exploit. Speed is fast. Targets one action. You're the target of a basic attack. That action misses, and you may make one move action directly after as a free action. And give... And how much you can move. <laughs> you're, get, you're getting quite far out of, out of melee range with that. Mm. All right. So, what's number five? Number five is Shadowstalk. Okay, Shadowstalk. That is a sustain exploit. Speed is fast. Target is one foe. Range is three. If your target ends a move action three or more squares from you, you may remove Shadow Stalk and teleport to an unoccupied square adjacent to that foe directly after sustain effect repeat effect. <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell how much fun I'm going to have with this? Cold Steel strikes again. <laughs> All right. And hang on, that's it's not supposed to show damage yet. All right, so that is number five. So what's the last one from your class? Trickster's Flurry. Right, so it's flurry. So that is a general exploit. Let's see, speed is slow. Target is one foe. Range is melee weapon range. Plus three A to cap check melee weapon damage if foe is off guard. Deal five times tier damage. So that'll be a definite case of of not of not missing. So now we get to the nightshade. Reaper's delight. So let's see, Reap Delight, that is a amplify exploit. Speed is fast. 
I'd say the majority of the actions you have so far are fast actions. That'll be interesting. <laughs> Targets one action. Like, unlike it was like unlike play, unlike last time where it's like okay I only get like one or two moves in and I was like okay now I get to be the fat I get to be the guy who does everything like four or five different things in a turn like Neff did last time. When you hit one or more foes that are off guard, plus two C to your to your next cap check. Mm -hmm. So that's the that's the first one from Nightshade. What's number two? A finisher crossing snakes. Because of because of how Crossing Snakes ha has the finisher thing, are you go are you going to be taking Grimjaw le the lead Grimjaw as your um as your third? Uh. Uh. He. Yeah, I'm think I'm I was thinking about that. Yeah, I'm probably going to do it. So I'm going to edit that. Well, I posted here. But yeah, I'm probably just going to do Grimjaw. So let's see. General exploit. That's a slow action. I bring it up because because leads and finishers are meant to pro are meant to proc and co and a combination. That makes that makes sense. Besides, so if I want to change how I want to do it, I can wait to the next encounter. Mm -hmm. So that's melee one. So if you if crossing snakes is your next action after a after a lead plus three C to cap check. Melee weapon damage plus one damage die. So I'm going to put that as three, six plus two. Uh, if you hit a poison foe, cross, crossing snakes can be amplified with dual attack or guillotine strike as a free action. And the final one would be lead Grimjaw. And that's going to be a general spell. Let's see, which is a slow action. Targets one foe. Range is melee one. Lead, if Grimjaw is the first damage dealing action you use this turn, inflict one stack of poison. Deal five piercing damage and inflict two stacks of poison. <laughs> so I think I think I see where I think I, it's clear to see where that's going to be going. We already have somebody weaponizing burning. Now we're going to have someone weaponizing poison. <laughs> Not surprising. Poison and doesn't. Hey. Good. Uh, and hey, if uh, the poison isn't doing enough damage, we can just turn it into burning with cauterize. <laughs> yep, I I like I like where I see this is going. So now for tide turners, you you've got two tide turners, and you can pick from you can pick from the ones available for both rogue and nightshade, or you can do one of each, like some of the folks here have done. Okay, so I'm going to do fool's luck. All right. That's that's a rogue one. Let's see, fool's luck. That is a trigger exploit. With a speed of free. Target is one action. 
seen. God damn it, Neff. Sure, your condition if you are the target of an action. In fact, target foe becomes the target of that action instead of, instead, if possible, if there are no valid targets, the triggering action misses instead. So, weaponized friendly fire. <laughs> <laughs> and what's the second one you're going to go with? Heart Seeker. You're not going to pick any of the ones from Nightshade, I'm taking it? Not this time. Seeker, that is a sustain exploit. Speed is slow. Target is self. Which means it doesn't have a range. So, damage you deal about? gains piercing, sustain effect, repeat effect. <laughs> what are you talk about doesn't have range? It does have range. It's called any poor, any poor bastard who gets in my way. All right. So the final bit is going to be the um, anchors and dead weights. Let me pull up my sheet. <laughs> so anchors, Sparkstone. Well, that's all. Everybody gets the Emberwind Spark. No, I think he's talking about the location Sparkstone. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Alright. Let me put the primary here. <clears throat> this. Don't worry. Okay, so there's that. <clears throat> he also... Uh, Truffa has a bit of history with the Rift Keepers and the College of Inventors. More so, the Rift Keepers is a negative, so they're, they're a dead weight. And through that, he has a anchor with the College of Inventors. All right. Uh, dead weight, rift magic. You can't have more than three in dead weights. I have a feeling that I wanted to double check. Okay, then if that's the case, then for a, one more dead weight, it would be ammo handling. Because I want to have some some kind of little goof with it with him. What is he scared of dogs or something? Sinophobia is a real thing. So let's see. Riftkeepers Guild. That's two points. Animal handling. That's one. That's one point. Sparkstone. No, I saw six. Two. Yes, I and saw six. Apologies. There's that, so it's four. And the last four points are going to go to tracking, drinking, and architecture. Well, I suppose some I suppose somebody who's used to sneak who's used to sneaking about would know how to um, part would know how to hang on the right ledges for buildings. Parkour, parkour. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Have you heard the good word of the sacred flame? The word is burning. Uh -oh. As I said before, goddamn enough.
Oh, I, I see why you went with truffa, the Italian word for swindler. Really? Ruffatore. Mm -hmm. Or was that was that a case of complete accident? I I try whenever I create, create a character, I try to have some kind of meaning to the the name. So I literally was like, okay, what do I have that's along there? And then I just went with it. Mm -hmm. All right, and that leads us to. <laughs> Zan. <laughs> I love how I was like, oh, you had, you had the we most. We finally made it. Zan, I'm right on time. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I oh, like how. Lady K. Would you like to po post this in Cloister for the Monk? <laughs> Oh, this is going to be fine. Right on time. Hell yeah. Here you go. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> you son of a bitch. I say then. No, this is not Sabin. This is Nibas Oragif. <laughs> bitch, please. I have cosplay block. I know that reference anywhere. You're still wrong. His <laughs> name is Nibas. Figaro, Figaro, Figaro. No, I think he's trying to tell us something here. Hold on, think... Jet. Hold on, guys. Let me, uh... I, I got a little carried away with my laughter there. <laughs> <laughs> you son of a... <laughs> I told you, Monk. If it had been tactician, <laughs> I would have been Cyan. If it had been Rogue, I would have been Locke. You no matter who her. I chose, there was an FF6 character coming, Monk. God damn it, you should have told me I would have told, had Lady K make my character similar to Locke there. No. 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 My, it would have telegraphed it too much. It would It would have telegraphed it too much. My joke. Fine. I kept doing the goofy. So, a bit of background when it comes to this. One, this is not using any of the base nine classes. This is using the pugilist class that we homebrewed because while there is some martial arts el elements with right. the spiritualist, in my opinion, there wasn't enough. Indeed. And it, fall it fell into the trap of the one-size-fits-all martial artist. So, we decided to fill in that particular gap. Oh. Um, and the other th the other thing is it unfortunately made um lady unfortunately made lady K's job a little bit trickier because it also meant having to design a class symbol for it. Yep. And the the one you see is the one we the one that was ultimately decided on. Yes. And in fact, uh, give me two seconds. I will actually put that up in the stream for people to see without saving in the way. Or Nebus, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> Nebus or a gif. Oh I don't know man, why, that was I great. Keep, I don't know why, but I keep getting an Eastern European vibe. <laughs> Damn it, God damn it, Zan! I just got the pun on the name. <laughs> he Fuck who you. laughs last. Fuck oh you. <laughs> Fuck you. Fuck it's you. an all-purpose bane. Look at that. You two, you and K were probably gig. Or probably oh, you like bet your ass like, oh I was. Oh my God, you have no idea. Mom. You have, you bet your ass I was, sir. <laughs> All I have to say is we've this. Been, we've been sitting here just peeking back and forth in DMs a little bit like, oh god, it's almost time! All I have to say is this. Lady K, when this is over, tag or... You can either tag him or message him. Joe TJ. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me he would not love this. Oh, he would. And uh, as you can see on the stream there, guys, that is the uh, sigil I designed. Mm -hmm. Or the pugilist. 
it was a little bit tricky because when we designed the class, we didn't really put much thought into put into creating a class symbol or um, class feature symbols. Yeah, I still got to work on those. But as you can see, I wanted to keep the uh, sigil in the background theme running, and I had to come up with that ASAP. So I quickly uh, talked with Monk and Zan about it. And it looks fucking good. Thank you, thank you. Mm. But, uh... But yeah, uh, so Nebus here accidentally turned out a cross between Sabin and Zangief. <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. There's a part but of it, it's okay at this, like, it could have also... It's, yeah. it's, most, it's mostly Sabin. It's just Sabin being very, very smug. <laughs> So I guess so. If we have anything related to trains, um, <laughs> absolute. I showed Lady K that video. She was like, "What the fuck?" That's what I was thinking too. Like, Ooh, which one? Duplexing a train in yeah. all versions of Final Fantasy VI. Oh yep, yep, yep. I love that. Oh, there's an actual that train up in I think the either the Carolinas or the Virginia somewhere around there that has an actual skull on it during. Uh, the Halloween time, and every year it's saving memes. <laughs> Would be. Okay, so for attribute generation, are we going to go dice rolling or standard array? We're going to go dice rolling, but if I don't like it, I'm going to I'm gonna take the three and three sevens array. All right. I'm hedging my bets, essentially. That was so fucking worth it. <laughs> it absolutely was. <laughs> that was so fucking worth it. <laughs> so do you need to roll those, Monk, or sh are you rolling them? I am. I am. Ro I am rolling them on my end. So okay. six, eight, five, seven. I'll take it. All right. So where's the six going? The six is going into Dex. Where's the five going? The five is going into Sorry, intelligence. Not, not the five, the eight. The eight's going into strength. All right. Where's the five going? Intelligence. And where's the seven going? Resi resilience, the only thing left. And there we go. All right. So, and... for you have what you have one point to spend on special action limits. Well, I, I have oh, two a freebie points first, yeah. Monk. And yep, that's I meant. one in strength, one in resilience, making them nine and eight, respectively. And eight. So, first off, what it, where's the special action limit going to go? I'm going... Let me check what I chose for all my skills and compare them to our class document. I'm pretty sure I'm going to throw that into amp effects, knowing what I picked, though. All right. Yeah, amp effect. Is, the funny thing is, you, a, a good chunk of the cl a good chunk of the classes will have will skew towards one towards one or two special actions. Ours oh. are amp and trigger in the in the pugilist. Well, there there can be a good argument for all three. We have a few sustained conditions, but there are way more triggered and amped conditions. So. All right, and where are you going to put the movement bonus? Uh, let me think here. I think I'm going to put that into uh, shift actions. All right. So you've got a shift of two. Mm-hmm. All right, and for skills, you're going to pick an occupation. Or you're going to pick manually. I am picking skills manually. All right. What's the major? The major is going to be endurance. All right, and the minors: focus, flight of hand, and athletics. All right. So you are tied with Gungnir as far as HP goes. Yeah, that figures. So. You could so Kay, you can tell Shades that he's no longer at the top of the mountain when it comes to 
the when it comes to the HP race, he has to share space with with Nebos. Okay, God. I will be sure to do that. No worries. <laughs> uh. Also, I found a picture of the ghost train. It's in council. All right, so toughness is six, athletics thirteen, endurance fifteen, intimidate nine, intelligence is five, resistance is four, and resistance is futile. We may get to that later. <laughs> I couldn't resist. I'd been holding no. back that joke the entire time. Like, if I'm so inclined, I might run, I might run Star Wars Adventures as a one as a one shot down the road. Hmm. Um, <laughs> it's just that if I do, if I do it, I want I want to make absolutely clear if I smell anybody trying to do an XP of an established character, I'm going to tell them to do it again. Duly noted. If we oh. do, I'm just going to make myself a rogue trooper. Nothing more. Let's see, so critical is three, accuracy is eleven, penetration is seven. Let's see, one trigger limit, one sustain limit, two amplify, and two tide turners. So, let, so into inventory. This is where we kind of messed with things a little bit. Yep, because we're trying to we tried to give an option for you know hand to hand combat, no no weapon fighting. You can always choose normal weapons from the equipment if you want to, but if you want to use more of the unique flavor of the pugilist, we have the optional rule for a weaponless hero. Mm-hmm. And so you get martial styles and, and energy styles to imitate both uh, melee and ranged combat. Uh, my martial style monk is focused water style for tier plus one D10 versus toughness plus two right. accuracy plus two penetration. So for the sake of the, for the sake of this, which um, which equivalent did I give for that? Oh, the equivalent weapon. Um, mm -hmm. That's going to be a uh, two-handed sword, is the equivalent. All right. And which which style did you go with? Um, it's uh, water style focused. So no offhand slash no support item. Yeah, I, I went with focused because I needed a way to still have the one hand, two hand thing, but not, not um, not in that approach. And going with master didn't fit, didn't seem right. Mm. All right, so means no offhand. What are you going with for weapon for a ranged weapon? So the ranged weapon, the equivalent would be the crossbow. Um, it's blast style. Tier plus one D eight versus toughness plus two penetration. Mm -hmm. And the armor equivalent. We didn't actually give an armor equivalent in the class. We just had people take normal armor because the armor there, there isn't really a difference between a multi, uh, martial artists wearing types of armor. Mm -hmm. Um, I was just going to take light armor plus one plus tier to dodge. All right, so light armor, that's going to give a boost to dodge, so your dodge is at six. Dodge! And as far as the keepsake? So, the keepsake in function is our scroll of uh, <laughs> rampart smashing. <laughs> which means, uh, which... Means well, I can't use, which means I can't use any of, I can't use the keepsake list in there. Um, so I'm going. For those who don't understand what this means, um, the pugilist is where we originally designed the mechanic for wall damage, where 
if you push someone to force their movement and they collide with something, any amount that they would have traveled further is then turned into d6s of damage. One so you push per square. Yes. So you push someone five squares, but they encounter an obstacle at two squares. They get three d6 squares of damage. And the damage is piercing. They don't get soak values. The scroll of rampart smashing turns all of that into auto crit. So the damage is maximized with no soak. Yeah. Um, the it form... Is... Mm -hmm that this scroll takes isn't actually a scroll monk it's a two-headed coin given by nebas's younger brother uh ragged ragda <laughs> fuck you ragda or <laughs> <laughs> see i got to double bane him with this character fuck <laughs> Oh, and you're yes. gonna be hearing you're gonna be hearing that name a, a, a few more times. It's also part of my anchors and deadweights. We will get to that when we get when we get to that. Indeed. Because... <laughs> now, because next is oh, is class is is technically class actions, but before we get to that, the maneuver. Yep. So let me go to the. The maneuver list. What maneuver are you going with? I was going to go with focus. Make a focus check. If you succeed, plus one healing or damage die to your next action. One stack fast. Associated skill is focus. <laughs> mm -hmm. I feel like they should have renamed that into something that isn't the same name as the skill. Me. Yeah. But that's my, that's my OCD talking. So now we get to your tier your tier one actions, which the hero manual is not going to help me with. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> All right. I'm going to close so... up the hero manual because I'm not going to need that for the rest of the night. Yep. So I have uh, <clears throat> I have them all written down. All right, what's the first one? Flurry of Blows, Centered Breath. An Amplify exploit that targets one damage dealing action. Amp effect, push the target one square. Action speed, fast. Can anybody tell me why I'm pushing people just one square? You got me there. <laughs> you got me there, too. Because if I'm next to an enemy who's next to a wall, one square is still 1d6 extra damage. <laughs> 1d6 auto crit damage. A guaranteed what? 6 damage every time I push someone into a wall. So long as I'm right next to it. Mm -hmm. Can't ask for more. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, what's in slot 2? Fluid motion. You may move an additional square when taking a move or shift action. So now I have a move of five and a shift of three. Suddenly I see Monk changing all the battlefields to open areas with no walls. <laughs> if if he did that to specifically target me when he wants me to play test the character we designed to have wall banging, that's kind of counterintuitive and counterproductive. Not to mention this is a module, so most of the areas are designed or pre-designed. There is also the fact that that's just not how I GM. Yeah. Unlike some, I encourage people to to um come up to come up with creative com creative combos and find ways to break to bend or break the game. That's why Final Fantasy Legend uh, Edition is so broken. Mm -hmm. We want to see how you guys can turn the game into a into a pretzel. <laughs> that's said though. He's probably still going to do something to you for this, a la Red Mother, perhaps. <laughs> um, I, I don't take, I don't make a habit of calling my shot. Oh, I know, but <laughs> I had to do that for a laugh from Lady K. 
So what's in slot three? Deflect arrows. When you succeed on a defense check from a ranged attack, move a number of squares equal to your shift. You want to hit me from afar? Okay, I'm coming closer, bitch. Hey, What did John say? <laughs> I have no timing, idea. Though. However, it was comedic timing. Yeah. It was. Uh, no, hold on, I'll ask him what he said. <laughs> Apparently, they've already switched out of Luchasaurus's. Uh, he said. They've already switched his Tron out ah. in regards to Luchasaurus uh, being redubbed. Oh, the kill switch Air thing. Place your bets, folks. How many how many weeks that's going to last? I don't know. So what's in slot four? Crashing wave. General exploit one foe melee weapon range. Melee weapon damage push the target one square speed slow. Once again, push, push, push. If I throw my amp on top of that, that's two squares. Ooh. <laughs> so, let's see. Melee weapon damage. Target. One foe. We could also have fun. You can push them into me and I can make them burn more. Why do you think that I'm not solely focused on putting people into the walls? Maneuvering enemies on a battlefield is Im is immeasurably valuable. Mm -hmm. No, I, I'm also thinking about that because if you do it just right, you send them in my direction. I can teleport to them and start stabbing them. Don't worry, I can teleport to enemies, too. Mm -hmm. I know, but it's like, but I have that one ability. You already have a pretty, you already have a pretty beefy base damage. The Your um, melee attacks are going to do 2d10 plus 2, and range is 2d8 plus 1. Yep. <laughs> so. I know. You know, I just hit things real, real good. That's all I do. Mm -hmm. That's all so... I do, guys. <laughs> so, fuck. Um, what's in slot five? Dragon's Tail. General exploit, one, or, no, hold on. Slot five should be Disrupting Fist, actually. Excuse me. Disrupting Fist, general exploit, one foe. Melee weapon range. Melee weapon damage, inflict daze. <laughs> I punch you in the eye. That's what I do. Maybe I kick you in the eye. I'd probably leave you further dazed than a punch in the eye. No, no, you just do the cl classic com comedic poke in the eye. Boing! <laughs> but what if he blocks it with his hand? You have, I mean, you have another hand, and you poke him there. I mean... Like Uncle would do. Yeah. Forget poke in the eye, take a look in uh, the cloister. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Uh-oh. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> Uh, hmm, hmm, um, hmm. no, 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 you know, no, that's, that's, you see, that's dangerous. Not, that's not gonna, that's not gonna poke their eye. That's, this is uh, a Christmas story on crack. Yes. Girl, you're gonna shoot your eye out with scope eye. <laughs> yep, she's pirate. gonna become an in instant pirate. Yep. Mm. <laughs> All right, so that's just dis that's disrupting Maybe fist. Basis, Slot six is nice dragon's tail. Dragon's Tail. General exploit. One foe. Melee weapon range. Melee weapon damage. Inflict prone. Dragon Tail. Dragon Tail. Oh, that's so, that's going damn to. Damn it, Rick. That's going to proc very well with um <laughs> with Trufa. Hey, if it's stuck in my head, I'm gonna have other people have that stuck in their head. Alright, so... 
I I'm sure Monk already knows, but um, I've just had ba 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 da 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 in my head the entire time. Castle Figaro theme. Thank you very much. I s it was it decisive battle. Still such a good battle theme. All right. What is so that's one, two, three, four, five, six. So what's in slot seven? Drunken Monkey! General exploit, one foe, melee weapon range, melee weapon damage. Move a number of squares equal to your shift. Amp effect. As a fast action, make a basic or melee or ranged action. So, uh, you could, when you do your shift, you could attack again for an amp effect. When you said Drunken Monkey, I thought you were meant, I thought you were going to say Doku for a second. Doku's not a monkey. He's drunk. He's drunk, but he's not a monkey. He's an elf who sells slightly used cod pieces as violin strings. <laughs> I will never let him live that down. Not that he wants to. This is Doku we're talking about. He's pretty pretty much a degen. As, mu as much as the rest of us. Back to story, please. We've uh, we've told the backstory before. It came it came out when we did the Life Path episode of Geek Watch using The Witcher, and the joke stuck. Fair enough. Yeah. One of the characters he designed in the Life Path was a merchant elf who wore nothing but jewels and a bejeweled cod piece, and then he sold the said cod pieces and said they doubled as violin strings. <laughs> Which means they really aren't cod pieces, they're just tea bags. Okay, what's in slot eight? Laughing Wind. The one sustained exploit I took. Any adjacent foe, melee one. Any foe that ends their move in a square adjacent to you is pushed one square away. Sustained effect, repeat effect. Mm -hmm. So basically, if they get too close, and I don't want them close for whatever reason... Uh, they don't get close. Oh, you ended next to me? No, you didn't. Oh, if I'm pushing you in that direction, you hit a wall? Okay. This will still proc my wall bang damage. <laughs> the other reason I took it. That's... so... And that's number eight. We should just call yep. you Harvey Wallbanger. <laughs> Harvey I Wallbanger, we attorney at law. <laughs> that was the working name before they had the obvious name. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So for the final action, what are you going with? Stinging Nettles, triggered exploit, self. Trigger condition, you take damage from a damage dealing action. Trigger effect, you make a basic melee action against the triggering foe. Speed is fast. <laughs> yep. <laughs> you know, just a nice little counter attack. Mm hmm. So, and now for Tide Turners. You should already know the first one is going to be Cacophonous Shout, Monk. General exploit, one to three foes, melee weapon range. Melee weapon damage plus three times tier damage. Push any damaged targets four squares. Fuck you! Let's see, it's a slow action... Nope. It's good shit, is what it is. Mm -hmm. This is your this is your standard repulse. It's a repulse that uh, pushes them four squares, and if they're if I maneuver right, they're gonna hit stuff. I'm gonna make sure to maneuver right. <laughs> <laughs> 
which that wa which that was the general plan the general plan was for the monk to was for the monk now pugilist to pinball around and treat the battlefield as one giant um ga one giant game of billiards exactly or pool for the for you unenlightened folk mhm mm but it's a uh... It's really the second tide turner that uh, cinches the deal. When we get to it. <laughs> All right, I got the I got cacophonous shout in. So what's the second one? Wandering comet strike. General exploit one foe melee weapon range. Melee weapon damage. Teleport a number of squares equal to your move. Amp effect. As a fast action, make an additional basic melee action and teleport a number of squares equal to your move. Speed of slow. At tier one, if I pull off Wandering Comet Strike in the same uh, in the same turn, I can actually spend all four of my AP teleporting and hitting people. Mm -hmm. That's Cold Steel the Hedgehog, everybody. And why I mention Cold Steel around me? <laughs> it's not like we haven't had that thing as a running gag for. Over a year now. I mean, you gotta do something new. Just use blood. Just use blood misery for something. <laughs> like, bro. But cold steel's funnier. Okay. So melee weapon damage. Ah. <sighs> All right, so that takes care of that. And if you guys think, if you think the monk, if you think the monk's combos are ridiculous now, let me assure, you, let me reassure you, it gets worse. Every tier, it gets worse. First, Don't first you mean of all, the pugilist? he he does mean the pugilist, but he can't, you know, not say his shtick. That's fair. He but, has uh, to promote the brand. But every, so first of all, every tier that we went through, we went through basically all of the, of the class actions the monk in 4E has. Mm -hmm. And that's, and we weeded out anything that was too similar or just didn't fit the, the Emberwind system and then tried to prune down actions as much as we could. But all four tiers of class actions turned, uh, class traits and, uh, Tide Turner actions um, in the Pugilist have more in them than any other class that's official. Not counting adding subclass uh, yeah, if actions. I technically consider this a um, in, in the soldier role mm. because of the fact that that it is more about that is more about offense but there are multiple ways it can be done and the bi the big thing with it is um is t is go is going in going into these highly mobile offensive actions yep highly mobile offensive actions that also hopefully push enemies into the places you need them or into damage <laughs> and one rule that I should that I should have put in when it comes to when it comes to wall banging that but um is applicable is um pushing enemies into other enemies counts as wall damage. What? Yes. Yes. Against both enemies? No, only against the only against the one who got pushed. And uh, does the <laughs> does the movement of it transfer to the other one or not? No, no. He stops in place and takes damage. Mm -hmm. Yes. It would be do it doing it where movement would transfer would make things way too complicated for a game that's trying to be um, simple. It end up like it end up being Blood Bowl. It yeah. it turn up turning everything into this weird Jacob's uh, Jacob's ladder. That's what I said. Blood Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, Monk, are we on to anchors and deadweights? Yep. 
All right, let me spin you a tale of uh, the jaded cynic Nebus himself. See, Nebus and Ragda, well, they used to live in Cloudbreak, which is why Cloudbreak is an anchor for them. But Ragda was sure, absolutely sure, that the Rift Keepers didn't want Scientics studied because it had a way to fix the unraveling. So Ragda had a plan. He would join the Rift Keepers and in secret study the, the forbidden Scientics. It went well for a few years until the Rift Keepers found out that one of their own was, not, was doing what they're not supposed to do. And from that day forward, Nebus never saw Ragda again. Which is why the Rift Keepers Guild is one of his deadweights. Now, Nebus has the conception of know thy enemy and know thyself, and you'll never lose a hundred battles. Which is why he studied Rift Magic. Just to make sure he could counter whatever they would throw at him. Which makes it an anchor. On the flip side of things, um, he really, really likes to save money. So, he'd haggle a lot. Like, a lot. With the Tooth and Claw Armory. To try and sell any weapons he didn't need. Because anything he picked up off of people he beat up, he'd just go sell. Tooth and Claw Armory does not like him because he always seems to get the better part of the deal. This is why Tooth and Claw Armory is a deadweight for him, but haggling is an anchor. Simple, eh? Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> so are, are there any other anchors or deadweights, or, the, or that's the gist? That's uh, three points in deadweights and uh, technically uh, eight points in anchors, but because you've got three points in deadweights, it's only five points in anchors because hmm. the negative and the positive. So that's yep. everything. All right. He's so... good at haggling and surprisingly good at rift magic. Well, he, he's, he knows how rift magic works, but he doesn't practice it. Yes. He knows enough to know that uh, if the rift keepers come against them, they're going to have a bad time. Mm -hmm. So let's review. Let's review what we have. We have Augustus, a a want a wandering sword for hire. Gungnir, a a warrior who's who's looking for that next big challenge. Um, Titania, who it who has the appearance of a librarian but is far but is far more of a witch she's a witch burner oh hippolyta the da the daughter of a retired gladiator and i'm get and since he lived to retirement i'm guessing a gladiator of some renown because glad because that's usually not how <laughs> how yeah, gladiator usually gladiators end in blood Exactly. He just managed to live long enough to get to get to um get to retirement age. To get out. Mm -hmm. I know she still participates. She's the champion there now. Oh, ladies, Lady Xanthia. Um, the full title, please. <laughs> <laughs> Say it, say it, Monk. Say it. It. Good job, Monk. Peasant. The the no the flame, the flame wielding noble woman, which does make me beg the question: Why a noble? And you you probably already have an answer to this, Neff, but there's the question of why a noble woman would be off adventuring. Uh, well, actually, I have an idea for that. I will message you later. Mm-hmm. Oh, because... And we have... Tr we have... Um, Trufa. 
a sp a um free I guess I guess Truth would refer to himself as freelance espionage. Currently under the lady's employment. But yes. <laughs> and Nibas O Oragith. Or Oragith, yeah. Mm -hmm. Nibas, a uh, man whose hands are covered in blood in a search for revenge for his brother. Which is fair. Though, since you, since you went with water, since you went with um, water style, I am curious what form of martial arts you see Nibas go, going with, even though we designed the pugilist as somebody who's dipping from different martial arts styles because you and I are both fans of Wuxia. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know if anybody has ever seen the actual martial style of Tai Chi. I've not, dabbled in it. For a not bit. like the slow the slow kata that many people perform for health benefits. And while some parts of Tai Chi were shown in well, the water tribe styles of water bending, it's not quite the same. I, I'm I'm going with the like Hmong dynasty or Qin dynasty levels of Tai Chi. <laughs> Where you flow like water, but are as hard as steel. You thought you hit me, but you didn't. Now your arm is in seven pieces, by the way. See, and there's obviously the obviously the film The Man of Tai Chi could could pro, could probably work as a visual reference. Mm-hmm. Um, another one that might be good. Uh, if you look at how Wing Chun works when people are being exhibitionists about it, they only ever pr perform the, the fast, quick hits. But Wing Chun is also about being very fluid. Yes, it is. And I so, can see that. You know, throw in, a, throw in a little bit of martial Tai Chi, a little bit of Wing Chun, maybe a tiny bit of Kenpo, and uh, you're, you're starting to get an idea of how Sabin will rock your, uh, or Nibas will rock your uh, world, especially with his uh, patented Meteor Strike Suplex. <laughs> Um, given that, given that, if I had to use, if I had to use a few more weeb examples, okay. Um, and you you can tell me if I'm on the money or not. Um, Ray from Hokuto no Ken. That's pretty close. I can see about that one. Um, Neji from Naruto. Yes, absolutely, Neji. Uh, I know. I know that. Ka I know that cat. I know that. Um, we mentioned water bending, but ka but Katara is is definitely one we kind of have to put in as far as that style. Yeah. Hold on. There's a there's somebody I'm thinking of that I can't remember the name of from History's Strongest Disciple, Kenichi. Oh, I need to watch that again. That's such a good one. Let me go look. It's one of the masters. I'm pretty sure. I wouldn't be surprised. Um. Dang it. Where is it? Characters. Mm -hmm. oh. I can't find it. <laughs> and I, I suppose anybody who's using Baji Quan would also would also be applicable. Oh. So we could, you know, name a very specific person from Virtua Fighter, then. Um, Akira. Yes. See, Akira in Virtua Fighter. Um, Helena in Dead or Alive. Mm-hmm. Oh. Isn't doesn't Shao Yu use that in um, Tekken? Or is her? Or uh. is, I can't recall if it was just that or just a 
smattering of diff of kung fu. I think it's a smattering of certain types of kung fu. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But the point the point is the that whole that whole moving like water. I sp I know it'd be tempting for some to br for some to bring up Spike Spiegel, but no, his is Jeet Kundo. I mean, if we want to get flowing like water, really, uh, if I if I'm gonna get super weeb with this, um, oh no, Commander, what are you doing? Technically, <laughs> you're all you're all gonna you're all gonna be like that's fucking bullshit, but it's not fucking bullshit. I was <laughs> laughing because John reacting to not hearing mm -hmm. what you said was priceless. <laughs> His name is Toho Fuhai, the undefeated of the East. <laughs> Fuck you! I'm not wrong! You're not wrong, but still, fuck you. That's four times this night alone. I think I've done my job. And since you, since you, <laughs> since you have Drunken Monkey as one of you, as one of your actions, yeah, we may as well, we may as well throw in Drunken Fist. Well, yeah. if we're gonna throw in if we're gonna throw in <clears throat> moves like water and and uh, moves like water and drunken fist, we're just throwing in Jackie Chan at that point. <laughs> more more or less. Oh. So you you get the idea. Nebus is not to be messed with. Yeah, although a few... monsters don't know that. Mm -hmm. Oh. There's there's going to be some interesting interesting encounters with the, with this thing, and I do I do think that now that everybody's gotten a little bit familiar with how things are set up, there's going to be a much bigger combo potential. Oh yeah, oh yes, easily. But this is... side note, I don't want to be with Nebus when he gets into a bar fight drunk. I'm not going to hit you. Just don't hit me. Mm -mm. No, my eh, character's just going to get the bar drinking. drinking. With him. Although, <laughs> if I have to make another DOA reference, Zan, um, Brad Wong. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I okay. need to play Daryl. God damn. Okay. But no, it's like you're out there. You're out there brawling. I'm still at the bar, just fighting. I'm just no. I'm at the bar drinking. But as far, um, Trufa, I get I get the feeling you're gonna be looking at a bunch of, um, fight sequences in Assassin's Creed as points of reference. <laughs> uh, I'm probably going to be picking mostly from Black Flag just because I, I think that's like the best in terms of the combat. Let's see here. Um, yeah, Pilots. Okay, I wouldn't be surprised if you end up wa if you end up watching Gladiator for some reference. Or three hundred. Um. Also, Troy. Yes. Well, I got to see if I can afford to get my streaming platforms back first. Yeah. I've been oh, without for. There's one fight in particular that I know I'm going to reference when it, that I know I'd bring up to you when it comes to Troy, and that's that particular clip is all over YouTube. Fair. And... Excuse my husband in the background. Yep. And as far as, um, if you can, if you can somehow, if you can somehow, bu um, bully, <laughs> bully John into watching an episode of Vikings, do that. I will. I uh, mean, that's if we can get our uh, platforms back. We we're down to YouTube and certain video and. Very few videos on Amazon Prime. Yeah, f fair. We don't I'm... have Hulu. We don't have Netflix. I don't have Disney anymore. Um. Actually, what was I the think... what was the one Vite the one Scandinavian anime that was going Vin on? Vinland Vin Saga. That's um, the one. I don't. Th I don't think that would be the pr the proper fit. Fair. Um. One that actually there actually there is one I can think of that would be a proper fit and maybe and maybe 
one maybe one day if I can t if I can talk everybody into it, use that as a movie night. Because I will host that myself if if it means more people get to see it. And Which that is it? the Northman. Northman's Ooh. a good one. I think I, that was one of the ones I wanted to see, but it just things didn't add up. <sighs> All right. But I don't want to rush this, but I'm getting hangry. Yeah, but yeah, things will certainly be interesting. I'll put I'll put a few um, bullet points of think these over for next week. But that is going to do it for th for this particular episode of the Cloister. I know this one was a little bit longer, but when we're building seven characters, that's it's going to take inevitable. some time. Oh, so until so, and of course, th of course, there will be a few interviews tomorrow and the return of Geek Watch proper. But until then, on behalf of the Good Brothers, present and not present. My name is Mildra. I am your gaming monk. Stay fucking frosty, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>